two, one, two, one, two. Test one, two, one, two.
Welcome to UK Brewers Championships 2023. It's the finals and we are here live in Elstree at uh, the home of Chimbley Coffee Machines in the UK um, at this fabulous event space that we're using for the finals. And uh, if you want to come down and enjoy what's going to go on with six amazing competitors uh, and lots of other things, then do come on down. But what we are going to do, because we've got the amazing team from LSFX, we're just going to pan over to those guys. Um, and, and they've given us the ability uh, today to kind of go on the roam. So we are going to go on the roam. And we are going to have a quick spin through our beautiful sponsors. So we have the team from Ernex here who are our cleaning partners. And you can come and chat to them and find out a little bit more about the chemicals and everything that's cleaning. They don't just do espresso machine powder. There are so many other products that you can uh, come and find out. So come and interact with them, ask questions, along with all of our sponsors. So we're going to fly around the room, just seeing what's going on. You can see competitors practicing. We've got a uh, Chimbley bean to cup machine just in the corner as well. So you can get some great grumpy mule coffee on the bean to cup machine, as well as um, from the traditional machine as well. Cavoya are here. They're still setting up thing. We've got the team from Brew by Hand and Malconi Grinders here um, with a, a selection of different bits that are not on the competition stage. But again, in terms of the grinders and the things that are going on, they're, they're here to talk about, um, ask questions, find out why the grinders are so good. Uh, this is Daniel Clark from uh, Chimbley. Um, who's here today. Uh, we got the team from Grumpy Mule making coffee. They're running um, this coffee service from the Malconi Grinder and the Chimbley Coffee Machine. So they're going to be, uh, just come down, get a coffee off them, um, and just chill out for the rest of the day. We got the team from Britta here. Uh, Gary is a wealth of knowledge in terms of water treatment. Um, he can talk to you especially about the IQ system which is one of my favorite. We are going to be doing sponsored spotlights after every set, and we're going to be talking to Gary about the IQ system on that as well, find out a little bit more information. And then back to the team from LSFX, uh, Damien and Al, who work with us, um, especially on the finals here, and make us look good and make the competitors look good, but also so you guys at home um, can still engage no matter where you are in the country. But like I say, if you're in and around uh, the Elstree area, London, hop on the Jubilee, Jubilee line, get off at Stanmore, come down and engage in the finals because as the day progresses, it's going to get more and more interesting. And I'm just checking. We've got judges, I think. Cool, the judges are just coming. So we're going to go back to here. And... Um, we are going to be running off one stage with the M200. We've got the E80 grinders um, grinding, and who knows what the competitors are going to bring. They, they can change from yesterday. They might run exactly the same as yesterday, but they're competing for a place as the UK barista champion who will go and compete at the Worlds. But without further ado, we won't hold you back anymore. Let's welcome our first competitor of the day, representing Formative Coffee, Ian Kissick. And let's bring on the judges. Yeah. Good to see you. Hi. How you doing? Hello. Hiya. Hi. How you doing? Hello. I'm very good. You? Excellent. Thank you. Uh, music, please. Everyone ready? Time. Technology is changing the way each of us live our lives and the way we conduct business. And cafes are no exception. So today I want to explore a little bit of how we can use technology to create better coffee experiences in cafes. Now to begin, one of the most exciting ways we can use technology is to create more immersive experiences. In the future, I think we're going to see a lot of this in the form of augmented and virtual reality. But for today, we're using these screens built into the table in front of you, which will act as a helpful guide through our time together. And you'll see on those screens that your order for today has already been placed. We're beginning with our espresso course using a naturally processed Hartmann Geisha 
from Santa Clara, Panama, grown at 2,000 meters above sea level. We'll then progress onto our milk and signature drink courses, both of which we'll be using an experimentally processed pink bourbon, produced and processed by Wilton Benitez in Cauca, Colombia. But for now, let's focus in on that espresso. Now, as I mentioned, it is a natural gesha from Finca Hartman, grown at 2,000 meters above sea level. Now, that natural process is going to bring us elevated sweetness, a great tactile experience, and a note of grapefruit. Meanwhile, the gesha varietal is going to bring us a floral note of jasmine. Uh, and I also mentioned that this is grown at 2,000 meters above sea level. Now that relatively high altitude means a slower maturation of the cherry and therefore more complexity in the cup. Now judges, when it comes to roasting this fantastic green coffee, I have two main considerations. Firstly, I want to ensure that we preserve that fantastic vibrant acidity that I loved when I first cupped this coffee. To achieve this, I've used a development time ratio of 15%. And I also wanted to make sure that I had a sufficient development uh, so that the coffee was soluble enough that I can pull it as espresso and have high levels of sweetness. To achieve this, I've used a 204 degrees Celsius end temperature. Now when it comes to brewing this coffee, um, I'm brewing it, uh, this is your espresso recipe, milk and signature drink will be different, but I'm using an 18.5 gram dose, a 38 gram yield, and a contact time of 30 seconds. Now, that's going to bring us the following flavor notes. We'll have grapefruit, and jasmine, as I already mentioned, but we'll have a further note of 70% dark chocolate. And if you miss anything that I'm saying, you'll see it on the screens in front of you. For your tactile, look for a medium low weight, a juicy texture, and a medium long grapefruit finish. Now judges, I most enjoy this coffee when it's had a little bit of an opportunity to cool down, and of course, with the crema fully incorporated. With that in mind, when I serve it to you, please take one of your clean teaspoons from your napkin Stir six times, front to back, and then deposit your used spoon into the green glass in front of you. And that green glass is gonna hold your milk spoon as well, just in case I don't mention that later. So let's just recap those flavor notes. As I mentioned, jasmine, grapefruit, 70% dark chocolate. And for your tactile, thank you. A weight which is medium uh, to low, a texture which is juicy, and a medium long grapefruit finish. Now, when I serve you your drinks, judges, as I mentioned, stir six times, deposit your spoon, sip twice, and then I'll give you about a minute to evaluate. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Just another 20 seconds or so for those uh, espresso stitches. A purge. Okay, judges. Now, for our milk course, as I mentioned, I'm using that experimentally processed pink bourbon produced and processed by Wilton Benitez in Calca, Colombia. Now, I mentioned that it's a pink bourbon. That's going to bring us sweetness and a note of raspberry. And it's experimentally processed with the addition of Saccharomyces pastorianus in the, sec in the first of two fermentation phases. This is going to introduce a note of dried mango. And for brewing judges, for this course and for the next, I'm using the same recipe. That is a 18.5 gram dose and a 45 gram yield. Now, for each of your single espressos for the milk course, I'm pairing it in a one to two ratio of espresso to milk. And that milk is a 3% fat Jersey milk, which has been freeze distilled to 70% of its original volume. But how have I chosen that milk? Well, judges, on the screen in front of you, you will see a demonstration of an application, thank you, that I've built and you'll see at the minute my description of this coffee this morning, and then in a moment, my application's recommended fat and sugar levels for this coffee. This is based on months of sensory research by myself and my team, investigating the optimal pairing of sugar and fat with any given espresso. Scoring it in a similar way to how you're doing today. Now, that high level of fat, 4%, that's achieved, helps buffer acidity in this drink. The high sugar content helps us achieve balance. I'm steaming that milk to 60 degrees Celsius, which when stirred, as I'll instruct you shortly, result in a drinking temperature of 48 degrees Celsius, at which I perceive the most sweetness in this drink. And when I serve you your milk drink judges, please take your clean teaspoon that's currently, hopefully, on your napkins, uh, stir gently in a circular motion six times to fully homogenize the drink, and then deposit your used teaspoon, as I said, with the espresso spoon in the green glass. Now your flavor notes, which will be on the screen in front of you, are raspberry, dried mango, and baker's chocolate. Time check. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Bit of a wobble. Thank you. Judges, once the final drink is served, I'll give you about 45 seconds to evaluate. There we are. Thank you. There we go. Thank you very much.
Uh, so another 20 seconds or so on these drinks, judges. Thank you. back together. For my signature drink, I wanted to use technology to help inspire me to create something a little bit different. So I used a chatbot describing my uh, discussion, describing my uh, espresso in the same way as I did for your milk calculator, thank you. Um, we had a conversation about what kind of signature drink to create. And of course, I contributed the tasting ability and it contributed some new ideas. This is the recipe we ended up with. I'm using that Wilton Benitez coffee, two shots of which have been chilling already, which is gonna bring acidity and bitterness. Next, I'm using 80 grams of a white chocolate and guava consomme. We produce it by combining, uh, we puree uh, 300 grams of guava and then combine with 10 grams of pectin X, which breaks down fibers in the guava, producing a translucent guava solution. This is going to introduce new flavor notes of mandarin and blackberry jam. Then I've added 18 grams of a geisha blossom simple syrup produced by brewing one gram of geisha blossom in 100 grams of 40 degree water for one hour. Then we combine the liquid part with equal parts sugar, making the simple syrup. This helps balance acidity, but it also brings a new flavor note of tonic water. Thank you. And lastly, I'm adding 20 grams of egg whites, which when shaken in this Boston shaker, is gonna help us achieve a creamy um, texture. I'm serving in frozen glasses. Just a warning, I'm gonna hit this quite hard. Um, a creamy texture. I'm going to shake it, pour it into frozen glasses, achieving a drinking temperature of 14 degrees Celsius, of which I perceive the best balance in this drink. Now, our flavor notes, which will appear in a moment, are mandarin, tonic water, and blackberry jam. I want you to evaluate it across three sips, swirling to incorporate the foam before each sip. Now judges, it's not just the technology that we've seen across these three courses, which I've, has been uh, influential in our presentation today, because every single word that I've spoken up until now has been written by or with the help of artificial intelligence. You see judges, technology is a tool for the barista. And using that tool, we can create exemplary coffee experiences. Just remember to swirl before each sip, taking three sips total. Okay, there we go. Now please go ahead and enjoy that, thank you. Thank you. Time check. Time. Big round of applause for Ian. <clears throat> How are you feeling? It's yeah. all done now. That's yeah. it. I need more coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're going to have a coffee together that in, sounds in a good. moment. Well, I'm going to serve myself first. If you don't yeah. Mind. Yeah. It's fine. Um, but uh, I, yeah. Again, you know. Um, performance from yesterday, some really interesting thoughts uh, on there. Um, you, uh, we, we didn't touch on your milk drink yesterday, mm. but um, you know, you said you, you were looking at specific um, fat um, mm. and uh, sugar levels mm. in the milk, yeah. specifically for different espressos yeah. as well. Yeah. So how, do you, like, how did you find that process? So I suppose my big focus uh, running the cafe has been kind of over time collecting as much information about our coffees in general yeah. and uh, introducing a way that we can score milk drinks. Uh, and because we're a multi-roaster uh, cafe, we put a lot of different uh, coffees, a lot of different types of coffee on the bar. Um, and then over the last few months, we've kind of implemented testing around scoring milk drinks mm -hmm. in a similar way to how they're scored here. Um, so 
using that data, if we're all calibrated, we can use it as a tool. Obviously, it's not perfect because it like, doesn't have taste. Yeah. But it's a kind of start to understand, OK, this is a more, for example, like chocolatey, nutty coffee. Mm -hmm. And you want to combine it in a ratio of 1 to 2. This is what might work. Yeah. Here's, for example, this is a very fruit forward coffee. So this is uh, like something a little bit different. Now, obviously, like, there are different factors in milk. And this is not perfect, but this is a start. And the thing about something like this is that it's a tool which, if deployed commercially, can improve over time with feedback from judges and baristas. Cool. We're going to uh, say goodbye to the judges uh, right now. Give them a big round of applause Thank to the you. judges. Thanks, Josh. Cheers. Thanks again. Um, yeah, so uh, just out of interest, do you serve any different kind of milk combinations in your cafe? Occasionally, yeah. Uh, but, uh, not for now, yeah, it's very it, difficult it commercially. Is, to it do. is very yeah. kind of intense. It's like an off menu thing, yeah. right? Especially if we have some coffees like, uh, like the Wilton Benitez, uh, we would potentially freeze distill milk, for example, or if, for example, a milk is particularly drying, we might look for a different milk. Uh, so yeah, it, it varies. But mostly it's with the kind of higher end coffees that we would seek to pair them in a different way. Cool, so you still got some coffee left for us? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna um, let you uh, brew us uh, four more coffees. Yeah, do you want the SIG drink? It's quite nice. <laughs> I can do espressos and SIG drinks. Um, or milk drinks. And you, you've got everything. Or everything. Um, <laughs> let, let's, let's I, I'm, I'm kind of tempted by SIG drink, but we'll, we'll keep it just to espresso. Cool. Um, and we're going to welcome uh, Gary from Britta. Give uh, Gary from Britta a big round of applause. He's going to join us. We're going to have a little sit down um, and a little chat with Gary. We'll talk through the coffee as well. But Gary uh, can also pick a guest from the audience. Um, so, you know, if there's somebody that you want to share an extra coffee with, then just grab somebody. Is anyone fancy coming up and trying some of this? We got any volunteers? Louise, you're smiling. Come on. There you go. Come on up. <laughs> Round of applause for Louise from Chimberley. Cool. So, um, so the uh, recipe uh, for the coffee was... Uh, 18 and a half in. 18 and a half in. 38 out. Yeah. And different coffees for the espresso. I'll let you guys sit down on the oh. sofa. You can make yourselves comfortable um, just while we wait for these coffees uh, here. Just gonna gra grab some more cups. Yeah, yeah. Right no, back. that's all cool. Okay. It, it's nice to see a brisket that's confident that he uh, can just walk away, leave his machine, and let his shots run. <laughs> they might be channeled. Yeah. They look a bit channeled, to be honest. Ah, uh, <laughs> look, they, these ones are not getting scored, <laughs> so um, we're, we're just going to enjoy them. Yeah. So, which is, is kind of the main okay. thing. Uh, uh, we can share those ones, maybe. Yeah, we'll have those. Get then, spoon. Uh, for the guests, we'll. Yeah, a spoon. Ah, wonderful. The aroma's beautiful. I mean, you describe yeah. jasmine yeah. Uh, and... Um, uh, grapefruit, grapefruit and 70% dark, chocolate, dark yeah. chocolate. Yeah. They're, it's interesting. Like, it's a pink bourbon and a geisha from different countries, and yet there are some similarities. Yeah. Um, like, grapefruit is kind of common to both. So it's kind of a little bit strange dialing them in sometimes. I guess they're not that dissimilar. So uh, wise distribution technique as well, and have you found that that improves um, the consistency of your shots? Yeah, it, it negates my shortcomings most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, is that something that you've implemented into your cafe or again? Not, do not you? yet, but I mean, there are tools which are coming to the market. Um, I mean, there are already the kind of spinny distribution tools, but... Yeah, um, I mean, uh, th th there was one yesterday, one that, yeah. that's kind of... Uh, makes it a lot quicker in terms yeah. of having the needles there, yeah. quick spin. And, yeah, uh, I think, not to plug a particular brand, but like there was one that was used at World Barista Championships last year, which is coming into production this year, which we would consider using um, from Barista Hustle. 
Okay. They're pre-stirred. There you go. Cool. So uh, you can come and uh, join us on the table, um, on the sofa. Thank you. Shuffle you along. So cheers. Mm. You're welcome. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm probably going to put uh, uh, either Louis, Louise or Gary on the spot. Is, is there any questions that you want to ask Ian while she got him here? And how do you find that coffee? I think coffee's, coffee's superb. Um, I've got one question for you. I'm glad you like it. When you're preparing for a competition like this, mm -hmm. how do you decide, what, what's the process for selecting the actual coffee that you're going to use? Do you decide on the kind of profile and work back, or yeah. do you sample lots of coffees and then pick one that you're going to use? I mean, over the last couple of years, mainly I've been looking for, to be honest, something that will score highly. Like, you, can build a theme, you can build kind of a theme and a presentation around a coffee, but you know, we, we took the approach of basically tasting as much as we could and picking what tasted best. Um, because the theme was not coffee-based and the theme was there for a long time, so technology, so we just wanted coffees that would slot into that. Um, we used this coffee in the heats, um, roasted by Standout in Stockholm. Really enjoyed it and it scored really well on espressos. And then we wanted something that would score really nicely on milk drinks and would be really fruit forward for signature drinks. So that was a bit of a process where we ordered a lot of green samples, roasted them, but actually we were in plot about a month ago, um, actually a few days before the heats, and cupped one of Wilton's coffees, uh, which is what I use for a milk drink, and loved it. Uh, so then we had to find who imported it because that was quite difficult. Um, we, we got it, got uh, samples of some coffees, uh, did 15 roasts of one of the coffee, uh, cupped them all, yeah. Um, kept them all and chose our favorite and went from there. So for me, it's basically about what we think will score highest for, for now. I'm not saying that we wouldn't do something different in the future. Louise? Yeah. Well, firstly, congratulations. This is absolutely beautiful. And I guess I'm just curious to find out what's next. What's next? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, actually, uh, we are launching our roastery. Uh, at London Coffee Festival. So that's something that we're looking forward to a little bit. And we'll have uh, my uh, milk drink coffee on the Slayer stand um, on Saturday and on another stand on Thursday. So that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, uh, let's give a big uh, SCA round of applause for Ian Kissick one more time. You can either sit down and chill because they're clearing your stuff um, or... You, you can do what you want now. Thank you. Um, so, Gary, um, from Britta. Um, so, awesome. you know, obviously the, the challenges in terms of um, particularly UK heats, more heats than ever, um, five different locations, five different waters. How, how do you go about preparing to, to try and make it as fair and as consistent for all the competitors as possible? Um, well, I suppose to start with, this is our second year of doing the competition, so we've got the experience from last year to draw upon, and we've got a pretty good idea of what the water conditions are like, the different venues. Um, so we, we take what we think is appropriate for that particular region or that particular location, and like we did here um, yesterday morning when we were getting ready, is just dial it in and making sure that it's, it's banging on the spec because we're work, walking, uh, working to the spec for the SCA for the it varies by each competition. And then we're just doing our best to get it as close as we can to that. And um, then also what we do is, once we're into the process of the, uh, the actual, like yesterday the semis, today the finals, we're actually testing the water right the way throughout the day to make sure we've got consistency. Yeah. Um, and also making sure we've got consistency between the practice areas as well as the competition areas, because that's very important as well. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Because I mean, the, the, the practice area, normally we, we plumb in, but to keep it consistent for competitors, we've like disconnected all the plumbing, running the machines just on on the tailored water as well, specifically. So, yeah, um, I, I think that's that's the right approach. It's the fairest approach as well yeah. for the competitors. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, obviously, you've got your um, stand over there. Um, you've got a lot of information there on the IQ system. So, just tell us a little bit about the IQ system, how it works, and what the advantages of it. Uh, okay, for IQ, for those that don't know it, it's a, a smart filtration system. 
Um, the problem always used to be not, not convincing people that you, they needed to filter their water, it was knowing to get consistency in it and also knowing when the, when the system needed to be exchanged. So essentially you've got a telemetry based uh, solution. Um, you don't need, the technician doesn't need to test the water when they put it in, it, it will measure the water and set itself up to a recipe. Uh, you can monitor it and monitor the performance of the filter on the app or over your desktop. So you can see things like how much water you used in the previous week, what the, um, the harvest of the water is, but more importantly for lots of people, whether you're running, I suppose, one site or lots of sites, um, you know how much life is left in weeks and precisely when it needs to be changed. Yeah, and uh, email notifications are coming in the future? Oh, you've got that now, yeah. Oh, that, that's yeah. already available. So if, you, cool. if you're a bit forgetful or you're relying on principally on someone else to do it and you want to just make sure that things are done, you can set it so that it will send you an email reminder as well. So you get plenty of notice on and, that. And also there's, there's three settings as well. So you, 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 you've kind of got like a standard setting and you can go slightly harder or slightly softer remotely as well. Uh, yeah, you can you change all that on the portal, you, or you yeah. could do it on your phone. You just go in, um, and I suppose if you're um, running several locations, you can make sure you've got the same water recipe at all the locations. Yeah. And if you're a roaster, it also means that your coffee tastes the same wherever it's brewed as well. Cool. As so, it. what have you got on the big screen over there that people can come and have a look at? Um, it, there's um, little video clips about basically an overview of what it will do, but also um, a practical things like um, how, how, you, uh, how you use the portal and how you can make adjustments to it as well. So um, pretty much any questions that people have got, we'll, we'll be able to cover those off. Perfect. So um, you want to know more about that, go and speak to Gary. But, but also water in general. It's, it's a fascinating subject that in the UK we've talked through uh, lots of times and, and it's always one of the conversations that we have with competitors and, and, and try and make that uh, consistent. But let's give a big round of applause uh, for Britta as our water partner. Um, Louise from Chimberley and also one more round of applause for Ian um, as from Formative Coffee. He can go and relax now and we'll be back uh, in a short while with the next competitor. See you then. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back to the UK Barista Championship final. All right, uh, just before we get on to our next competitor, just a reminder, if you haven't signed in yet, there is a tablet just at the back of the room where you can do that super quick. So, without further ado, let's give it up for Ted Longdon from Watch House. And... It would be nice if we had some judges. <laughs> where, where are the judges? Judges! Let's welcome on the judges. Good to see you. Hey, how are you? How are you, mate? You okay? Hey, how are you? How are you, alright? Hey. Hey, how are you, alright? Hello, how are you? Great. Um, so. Can I hear my music, please? Maybe just a tiny, tiny bit down. Down, sorry. That's good. And... From the start, please. Time. We now have more control over our fermentations than we've ever had before. Through techniques such as using sealed tanks, the introduction of yeast and bacteria, and anaerobic fermentation, we're able to create more of those compounds which we perceive as positive flavors. But I was speaking to a producer, the producer of the coffee I'll serve you today, and he explained to me that one of the compounds that makes these controlled fermentations so exciting is the same compound that limits us from taking our espresso to the next level. This compound is carbonic acid. Try the cup closest to me. This is carbonic acid at a low concentration. You'll see it's vibrant, tropical, and contributes to many of the amazing flavors in anaerobically processed coffee. But coffee is made up of so many acids. So try the second cup. This is carbonic acid at a higher concentration, where you'll see it quickly becomes dominant, sour, and astringent, limiting the flavor potential of that coffee. Now, let's be clear. The espresso we ink at the moment is excellent, but what if I told you this producer has learned to control carbonic acid, allowing us to create espresso with more vibrancy, better sweetness, and the most amazing balance. This producer, Mauricio Chatar. Mauricio's farm, Finca La Negrita, sits at 1,800 meters above sea level in the Tolima region of Colombia. Here he grows many exotic varietals, including the one I'll serve you today, the red geisha. The red geisha is an incredible floral and fruit-driven varietal. But it's the innovative processing that creates the most amazing flavor clarity. It starts with the ripest red geisha cherries being picked before they're sanitized to remove any foreign bacteria. These are then placed into stainless steel tanks to undergo fermentation, which is where the big innovation happens. Now, traditionally, the tanks would be flushed just once at the start with carbon dioxide. But Mauricio noticed that this created a higher level of carbonic acid as the CO2 was reacting with moisture in the coffee. So what did he do? He found that by flushing with nitrogen periodically, he could not only dispel oxygen, creating an anaerobic environment, but he could also dispel carbon dioxide, limiting the buildup of carbonic acid. This allows us to create espresso with more sweetness and the most amazing vibrancy.
Now, learning to roast this coffee was fascinating. We found that due to the lower concentration of carbonic acid, we're able to roast lighter, better highlighting the varietal quality. So I've chosen a profile that's seven minutes and 30 seconds in length with an end temperature of 203 degrees. Now, due to the lower concentration of carbonic acid, I'm able to tighten my ratio, improving both sweetness and texture. So today, for your espressos, I'm using 18 grams, sorry, 19 grams of coffee for a yield of 34 grams. Now, my favorite part, the flavor profile. I ask that you write down mango, black currant, strawberry, and dried apricot. The weight is medium, the texture creamy, and the finish is long and sweet like milk chocolate. Now, you're going to enjoy this espresso in three sips for me. But I'll instruct you on when to take these sips and what to focus on. So when you get your espressos, I ask that you stir them 10 times for me. You can use the pots in front for your spoons and just await my further instruction. Once again, just evaluate the crema, stir 10 times, use those pots for your spoons, and await further instruction on an espresso with less carbonic acid, but more of everything else that we love from controlled fermentations. And as soon as you're ready, go ahead and take your first sip, focusing on that ripe mango the black currant and the medium weight. And when you're ready, go ahead for your second sip. This time, focusing on that strawberry, the dried apricot, and the creamy texture. Now, Maurizio has designed coffees for moments like this. So when you're ready, go ahead and take your third and final sip. Enjoy the full flavor profile of Finca La Negrita, especially that sweet milk chocolate finish. And as soon as you're ready, we'll continue to the next course. The fermentation optimized this coffee for espresso, creating those vibrant fruit flavors that you've just tasted. But the unique drying process optimized it for milk. 
intensifying those flavors to create a drink that's truly harmonious. Mauricio chooses a drying process that's eight weeks long. Here, he keeps the relative humidity at less than 40%, and he uses industrial fans and filters out all UV light. All of this together intensifies the flavor profile of the coffee, carrying those rich fruit flavors into your milk beverage. To match the high quality sweetness that I found in the espresso, I'm freeze distilling semi-skimmed milk. This, once blended back in to regular whole milk in equal parts, creates a balance of fats, proteins, and sugars. It's just perfect for this coffee. Using just 45 grams of this milk, we can create a new and exciting taste experience with flavors of strawberry cheesecake. Bounty chocolate and damson plum. Once again, stir these five times for me. You can place the spoons in the same pots. Strawberry cheesecake is just exceptional. And I hope you enjoy drinking it as much as I enjoyed making it. We'll save the best to last. There you are. Enjoy. As soon as we're ready, we'll continue. In the espresso and milk course, we used a tighter ratio. 19 grams in, 34 grams out for both drinks. And this optimized both the tactile and the sweetness. But I found that a long ratio, 19 in, 60 out, created the most amazing flavor clarity in your signature drinks. Now, don't forget, Mauricio chose the red geisha for its fruit forward profile. So to four shots of that espresso, 19 grams in, 60 grams out, I'm adding 200 grams of a blended fruit juice. This was made by taking equal parts red grape and strawberry, filtering overnight and dissolving in 10 grams of sugar to bring back that fruity sweetness that we had in both the previous courses. Now Mauricio taught me that any acid in the right context and concentration can be positive. Acetic acid is generally considered very negative in the context of coffee, but in this drink, it creates the most amazing crispness and vibrancy. So I'm adding seven grams of a mango vinegar made with six parts mango juice, one part sugar, and a six-week fermentation. The last two of those weeks being open to oxygen, creating the vinegar. Now I'm gonna finish this drink with freeze-dried raspberries to create a final flavor profile, which you can write down of black cherry, pineapple, and passion fruit. And the last ingredient is maybe the most significant of them all, pure nitrogen. Not just nitrous oxide, as commonly used, but pure nitrogen. The same nitrogen that Mauricio used to flush out carbon dioxide, reducing carbonic acid, creating the amazing flavors that we've shared today. Here I'm using it for its textural properties, 
It creates a silky and creamy texture in your signature drink. So here we are. Maurizio showed us that controlled fermentation has improved our coffee. But he also realized that it had created the next limitation with carbonic acid. And for this, he had to innovate. But Mauricio's innovations are not just conceptual, they're reality, which we can see, smell, and taste. A reality designed for moments like this. A reality in which we can unlock espresso with more vibrancy, greater sweetness, the most amazing texture and flavor clarity like I've never tasted before. Thank you so much and enjoy them. How are you Thank feeling? You. I feel very good. Yeah? yeah? Very good. Happy with it? Very happy. It all, yeah. Everything went as planned. It was, yeah, exactly. Amazing. Yeah, it seemed super smooth. Thank super, you. super yeah, smooth. Yeah. I really like this focus on um, carbonic acid. I mean, I know I learned a lot, which is really, really fun when someone brings on an idea and then it's like, yeah, wow, yeah. that's really cool. And I'm going to take that into consideration. I think that now. came from the coffee, right? Like, it was, it was, first of all, it was an amazing coffee, and then it was why is it so amazing, right? And those were the questions that we got to, to ask and learn from. Right? And really cool that you could have those chats with Mauricio, the yeah, producer, yeah, and exactly. kind of have that collaboration there, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was through, uh, through Ryan and Rodolfo, who are both here, but uh, yeah, it's amazing to be able to, to have that kind of uh, discourse. Yeah, and I wanted to ask about um, the little cups that you asked the judges to taste at the beginning. Yes. And they had different concentrations yeah. in. And what was the kind of decision behind doing that? How did you do that also? Is it like a dropper of acid that you add? No, so it's, uh, it's literally a coffee that we found to be fairly high in carbonic acid anyway. Ah. Um, and we make two filter coffees, you know, one at a higher concentration, one at a lower concentration. Because we've all had that where you have a very maybe funky coffee. Um, high in carbonic acid, and as a filter, it's amazing, it's tropical and stuff, but at higher concentrations, you try and make an espresso and it's difficult. Um, no, so, that's yeah. really interesting, because then it gives you that reference, exactly, doesn't it? Yeah, because sometimes the, it's hard to sort of conceptualize that. Yeah, it's about like illustrating that the, specific the point, acid right? yeah, yeah, yeah. is like. Yeah. Amazing, and uh, your sick drink sounded incredible as well. One thing that stood out to me was the the mango vinegar that you fermented for six weeks. Yes, that is was, some forward thinking. It was a, a, a long <laughs> preparation, yeah. Um, but no, it was an amazing drink. We worked with uh, some really talented uh, bartenders. Rasty was uh, helping us out with it, and we created something oh, really great. amazing together. Yeah, it's fab when you have that team behind you, yeah, right? Exactly. And you can kind really of fun. draw on everyone's specialties. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Awesome. Judges are finished. Let's say goodbye to the judges. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank Big you. round of applause for the judges. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. OK, so I'm very excited to try your coffee. Will you brew some for us? I would us? love to. Amazing. And we're going to get the guys from Ernex up. We've got Verity and Mike over here. Let's give them a big round of applause.
Come on up, guys. Cool. So, uh, yeah, make yourselves comfortable. Don't sit on the mic, though. <laughs> cool. So, Ted, remind us of the toasting notes in your espresso. I believe it was mango, blackcurrant. Strawberry. Strawberry. Dried apricot. Dried apricot. It's very creamy, very kind of, like, it's very... The weight is medium, but it's, you know, it's on the upper end of medium. Uh -huh. uh, the finish is just incredibly sweet. It just gets better and better. Amazing. So. so excited to try it. I'm sure you guys are too. Yeah. Are you big espresso drinkers? Or do you prefer a, a milky drink? You like an espresso? Amazing. Yeah. It's, okay. it's great. It's not very often that we actually get to try what the competitors are brewing. I feel like you can kind of imagine it in your head, but getting to try it, I'm buzzing. Awesome. Should I do four? And only three steps. Yeah, you've got to remember to stir it ten times. <laughs> do you want to grab the mic? Oh, yeah. If, I mean, only if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Grab that mic. <laughs> awesome. All right. Am I doing four, two, four? Yeah, do us four. You can have one, too, if you're not sick of yeah, drinking well. it. <laughs> I have a good team who taste things... Uh, who taste things for me. That's definitely helpful. So did you know from the start that this was the coffee you were going to use? Mm, it was always a... Uh, it was always a contender, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was... Uh, I mean, even before, I was like, I know uh, Mauricio's coffees do so well. Um, they are, like, unbelievable, right? Like, they, they always are unbelievable. Um, it was one of the first amazing coffees that I've bought. Um, so it was always like, you know, it would be really, really amazing to, to use it. Yeah, and it's awesome to use a coffee that you personally love, yeah, isn't exactly. it? Because then you can really get behind it. And I think it makes it easier because we have to taste it a lot. So much. Right, so yeah. it's, you know. And I think by the end of it, if you still, if you still love it, it kind of shows like. Oh, yeah, you know, then that's pretty, the one. It's pretty good, right? Amazing. I love these trays, by the way. I don't know if anyone else noticed how nice your trays were. Did you get them made for they you, or did you buy them? Amazon's finest. Lovely. Shout, shout out to us. Absolutely. <laughs> shout out to Jeff. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> OK, so I think we got the first two here. I'll pass them over to Verity and Mike. Thank you very much. Right, let's get comfortable. Hi. Very good. You okay? Good to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. Awesome. So, okay, let's have a taste. Cheers, guys. Salut. Mm. That is so sweet. So, so sweet. I think very just very tropical, very mm. clean, very sweet. Super easy to drink espresso, definitely. What do you guys think? Yeah. That's just, oh, damn that. <laughs> Amazing. So um, have you guys got any questions for Ted over here? Uh, yes. Once you've got through to the finals, how many hours a day and days a week do you um, practice? A lot, a lot. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it, it ramps up, right? So it might be, you know, a couple of hours after every day or an hour after each day and then it was up two hours and then on the weekends as well and then that's a lot up to uh, like the two weeks before is just your it's all you do really yeah i think mike had a question too i have two. First one being a man how did you learn how to do two and three things at once <laughs> i don't know <laughs> and secondly how long did it take you to get it into the 15 minute time scale um to get your timings just right. It's, yeah, it's difficult. I think you have to design it around that. I think what we did a lot was, you know, we know that by, say, five minutes, we need to be doing this. And if we're not, that's a cue to speed up. I think also the music helps, right? So when the track changes, if I'm not already at this point, you know, either something's gone wrong or, yeah. Because over the days watching it, and watching the counter down, and you think, oh, somebody's gonna run out of time here. 
and then you just finish two seconds and yeah. And I noticed it's that you fantastic. actually finished and then you just sort of stood there for a moment I had, and then yeah. called time. Yeah, it's, yeah that was it's, great. It's, it's fantastic. So controlled, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It really, really is. And congratulations for that. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Amazing. Cool. So, uh, Ted, you can relax. You can just hang out now and listen to us chat about Ernest. I can't wait. Um, so, let's give one last round of applause to Ted. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Let's chat about cleaning supplies. <laughs> so just remember to hold the mic nice and close. Yeah. Awesome. So um, Ernex has been going for a very, very long time. 1936, Six. I believe. Yep. That's, that is a long time. Yep. So how has cleaning and espresso cleaning changed over those years? So Ernex was founded f for cleaning urns in downtown Manhattan. Wow. Um, yeah, how are you, and right? they were well. self-packaged well. envelopes like, for cleaning. Yeah. Really? And it was just the urn good, cleaner. Okay. And then it's evolved um, as equipment's evolved. Yeah. So a few years ago, yeah. cold brew yeah. became a huge yeah. thing. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so we had to have a cleaner for that. And then nitro. Uh, so that yeah. was a lot more technical <laughs> in regards yeah. to the cleaning of it. Um, it just evolves as equipment does. Yeah, that's so the interesting. The range gets bigger. Yeah. I always like, I love those videos. You know, the how is it made videos. Yeah. We get to see inside the factory and I know on the Ernex all Instagram. All the cleaning tablets. Yeah, you can see all the tablets coming out the machine. It's so cool. Yeah. It's like actually really soothing. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so how do you guys support the competition? So obviously we know that you supply the cleaning equipment, got the aprons for the judges. Yep, so how important the, is the cleaning? Um, the lovely aprons and boards. And then we supply cleaning products for all the heats um, and then the finals. We send everything we think you'd use plus other things. Um, and then there's a brilliant team come in and as we see after everyone, it's unbelievable. Um, back flushing, there's a, a sprays that you'd use on a grinder to remove any oils, uh, grinder cleaners, wipes. Um, there's so much that goes into it. Yeah, it, it does make such a difference. Especially when the taste of the coffee is such a big thing. Yeah. It needs to be as clean as Definitely. possible before. And you said, Mike, what was it you said? A clean machine is a... A clean machine is a happy machine. Clean machine is a happy machine. I love that. Uh, you should make that your new uh, yeah. tagline. And a happy if... machine makes great coffee. And a happy machine makes great coffee. Thanks, Mike. Words of wisdom. <laughs> Uh, awesome. And you were telling me earlier about a new product that's been being developed. And it actually is super, super interesting, I think. So you can tell us a bit more about that. The milk cleaning tablet. Yeah. Yeah. So they've, we've had a, a milk cleaning tablet for probably around five years now. Um, and it's an acid-based tablet. Now, most people use an alkaline liquid, but an acid tablet just through what they're used to. Um, but we were told that acid's the best to get rid of the, the fat build-up and the milk. But then with the, um, the new milks, the oat milks, the coconut, an alkaline tablet is a much better cleaning option for that and removes the fats and what have you a lot better um, for all the alternative milks. So that is the product of 2023 yeah. for us. Yeah, no, that's super interesting, especially because of the rule change of the competitions yeah. where you know, people are going to start using alternative milks. Like, that, that's super yeah, relevant absolutely. then. absolutely. So, yeah, that's, that's where the... It's quite good because it's a product we already have, but we've got to make it better to suit the market yeah. as it is now. Awesome. Love that. Any final words of wisdom? I feel like, Mike, you might have keep something cleaning. to impart. Keep the machine clean and keep, keep it happy. Keep the machine clean and keep it happy. I love that. And always use Ernex. <laughs> All right, thanks very much. Big Thank round you. of applause for Ernex. Thank you so much, guys. All right, we'll be back shortly with the next competitor. So, we'll see you soon.
So hello and welcome back to UKBC uh, 2023. We are here at the finals. Uh, we're at Chimberley, the heart of um, the competition event space here at 270. Um, we're going to show you just pan a little bit to the right there. Um, and that is where the competitors are practicing. Now, we're not allowed in there. Um, but we just thought we'd show you a little bit of the outside of the building. Remember, if you're watching online and you're around the area, then do feel free to come on down and come along to the venue. So we're going to walk in the way that you would walk in if you come. And just try and enter through and make it as tricky as possible for our lovely cameraman uh, from LSFX. Uh, and the team here, um, trying to push them and challenge them as much as possible. We have already seen some amazing competition and there is more to come. And as we, I'm gonna make it a little bit easier for you and I'm gonna take some of the backwards walking. We are going to go in and see who is our next competitor. So if you come down to the venue, then this is the sign that you're looking for. This is the entrance that you want to be coming in and entering into the venue. <clears throat> Where the first port of call, apart from signing in on the side, will be at Grumpy Mule, where we can get some delicious coffee um, to caffeinate yourself and then find a lovely seat and settle yourself down into it. Walk past the Brita stand, where we can talk about all things water and then get ready to experience some of the magic of competition that is UK Barista Championships. This competition showcases the best talent that we've got. We had 14 semi-finalists yesterday. We're down to six today. But without further ado, we want to welcome our next competitor. Give it up, representing Grumpy Mule, Aaron Stein! And let's bring on the judges. I got fist bump over the table. I'm not very tall, so I'll do this. Is that everyone? Hello, hello. How are we? Good, good. Uh, nothing to. Please. Thank you. There we go. We turned it up today. And time. Judges, I love this. I love specialty coffee. And I want to share it far and wide. But to do so, I believe we need a wider market. So let me use my advertising degree to explain to you how I believe we can do this. Let me, let me explain the law of diffusion of innovation. This shows that to move from niche to a mainstream, you have to pass a tipping point at 15 to 18% market penetration. Let's take flat whites as an example. Specialty coffee shop regular for years, and suddenly overnight, boom, they were everywhere. That's because they passed the tipping point, fell to the mainstream. So if we make up five to 6% of the UK market, how do we move forwards to the tipping point? There are two things I wanna talk about today. The first of which I discussed with Jameson Savage from Finca Debra, situated at 1,900 meters above sea level in Panama. Now, when I discussed my routine, he said his symbiosis geisha would be perfect for today. That's due to the complexity that's made by the 100 hours of anaerobic fermentation that build on top of your typical floral and citric notes you expect from a geisha. I roasted this coffee 12 days ago, and I used a pre-soak, which is effectively where you use a high charge, sorry, it's where you use a high charge and effectively turn the power off. I found by doing this, the sugars matured in a much brighter way, which you will perceive today as medium to high in the cup. I'm also going to balance my shots 
and the acidity by using chilled cups. I got these out of the chiller just before I came on stage. Oops. Just before I came on stage, because I found this brought better flavor clarity to the shot. You'll also find a low to medium bitterness. The recipe I'm using today is 18.5 grams in, extracting 39 out. I found here the best tactile experience, which you'll perceive as a medium weight, a silky texture, and a slightly drying finish, but it's exceedingly pleasant, like a really good quality cacao nib. All together, you can expect taste notes of pink grapefruit, of red plum, of 80% dark chocolate, and lastly, rose. Now, if I explained that to anyone from the 95% outside of our specialty sphere, it would sound like gibberish. Please assess your crema, but don't drink quite yet. What is coffee to them? Well, lucky you, it's in that mug in front of you. It's instant coffee, and I'd like you to please take a sip just for your reference, because I want you to get into their mindset. I want to imagine this is what you're used to. This is their smooth coffee at home. And then you walk into our shop, our specialty shop, and you're given this information to make sense of what you're about to drink. Speaking of which, in a couple of seconds, I'll ask you to stir five times. On your first sip, please hold it in your mouth and move it around as if you're chewing, because in doing so, you'll find that silky texture becomes juicy, like biting a ripe stone fruit, and the rose will grow. On the second sip, the, uh, that dark chocolate will become far more evident. Please, you've waited long enough, feel free to try your espresso. I should save easy for your spoons at the back. So milk drink judges, today I'll be using an organic barista milk from the Acorn Dairy in Darlington. This is a phenomenal organic farm and it's their 4% milk and every time I compete I end up using this because I continuously test and it continuously comes out with the highest sweetness. This is mainly due to the fact there's no homogenization during their processing. You can expect a buttery texture, taste notes of banana milkshake, shortbread biscuit, vanilla, and salted caramel on the finish. Now, I could explain that to anyone, even from the 95%, and what I've just said, would make sense. Why is that? When we wouldn't understand the espresso. Well, milk drink descriptors are simple. It's simple descriptive language. This is how we learn as humans. This is exactly how I would teach my children at home. Hello, Joey and Anna, by the way. Sorry for not saying that yesterday. 
I would like you to now turn the bags around in front of you. You see, this is simple descriptive language, and this is how I would have described the milk course before. Uh, sorry, the espresso course. Getting all tangled. If you were from the 95% and walked into a specialty coffee shop and you saw this, you'd probably understand the wording. Bright denounces that citric-like acidity. Juicy sums up the stone fruit sweetness. And complex sums up the coffee as a whole. If you walked in, please enjoy. If you walked in, you can ask what makes this complex. And at this point, we have opened, we almost opened the door with simplistic language. You could then explain that 95%, uh, sorry, that 100 hours of anaerobic fermentation would do this to the coffee. Please enjoy. Simplistic language does not negate complexity, judges. It opens a door to it. And that's what I'd like us to do. I would like us to open more doors. We can put all the complexity we want on the back of packs. But appreciation only begins with understanding. And I believe we as an industry could help people understand a little bit better. So I'm going to leave you to enjoy your milk drinks while I prepare my second pillar for today. Please enjoy. So, simplistic language was our first pillar. What is the second? Today, judges, you're assessing balance. Sweetness, bitterness, and acidity in such a way that it brings flavor clarity in the cup. In front of you, you'll now see a lovely picture of my face and my father's. I'm calling this my acidity library. That's because, having grown up in the UK, I know all about sweetness because we've had sweet shops since the 1800s. I know all about bitterness because I've been force fed green vegetables all my life. Thank you, Mum. But acidity has changed over the years, particularly from my father's generation to my own, mainly due to globalization and the access to new products such as. In the 90s, I grew up with pineapple, which is citric, excessive amounts of grapes, which are tartaric, and mango, which is a bit of everything. These are things my dad didn't get a chance to try. So I wanted to create a signature beverage today, using my acidity library and his, to create a drink which we could enjoy together and he could understand. So I'm starting. Oh, so all together, you will be able to taste today. Please write this down. Wild strawberry, red cherry. It's got a melting ice cream texture. Not melted, melting. And lastly, English cola, reminiscent of something like a Fentimans or a Karma cola. Now, how did I do this? Well, first things first, I'm adding four shots of my Symbiosis Geisha to my hyperchiller. 
This locks in the flavor. Next, I'm adding 15 milliliters of a black currant reduction. This is going into the chiller. And I made this by heating black currants for 20 minutes on a low heat and then passing through a sieve. This adds a bright citric acidity, which changes the pink grapefruit into wild strawberry that my father knows well from his time up in Scotland. Next, I'm going to add, and I should at this point say, the next two ingredients are complicated, so if you want to take this away, feel free. I'm adding 30 milliliters of an apple and rhubarb geisha saccharum, which is a mouthful. I made this by taking used geisha puck and mixing one part geisha puck to one part cane sugar. This creates an oily slurry over 24 hours. And I then passed apple and rhubarb fresh juice and geisha pour over through this at a two to one ratio with the apple and rhubarb. This creates a beautiful harmony of flavors of the UK and Panama. It was hard not to drink at all and a malic acidity, which turns that red plum that you tasted before into the red cherry. But again, like the espresso, I'd like you to hold it in your mouth for a little bit longer because that red cherry evolves into a dark cherry. Next, I needed an acidity that we both understood. And you'll find the lactic area is the largest for both of us because we know milk well, but I didn't want the body of the milk, but I wanted the acidity. So this is a lactic milk clarification. I made this by making a lactic solution, mixing one part lactic solution to one part sugar syrup, and then passing, putting it to milk, creating curds, and passing through a filter. This cleared up leaves me with that lovely lactic acidity, which, when whipped in my Nutribullet, is what gives you that melting ice cream texture. And last, a little sugar syrup, cane sugar syrup shot, two mils, to add a little bit of sweetness. And when combined with that rose, evolves into, thank you, the English Cola. I'm going to blast this in the Nutribullet. When you drink, I would like you to swill 10 times before your first sip and swill before every sip. <laughs> Judges, today, I, thank you, I've used acidity to my benefit. I've used simplistic language. I believe as an industry, if we can do this more, we will be able to not only move towards, but smash through that tipping point. Please feel free to enjoy straight away. I've absolutely loved this, genuinely. Thank you for your time. A huge round of applause to Aaron. It's, it's all done now. <clears throat> and breathe. You done? Would you like a glass of water? Yeah, I would love yeah, one. We can. Uh, it's almost like you know me. Well. Look, it's it's. You uh, can hear it, can't you? Yeah, my, my uh, <laughs> turn to serve you for once. Thank you. Uh, but you're going to serve us some coffee yes, in a short while. Am, but, yes. You know, whilst, whilst you do that, there we go. Yeah, it's, it's that, that dry mouth moment is horrible, but you know. I can't help it. I get, um, I get the shakes, no matter what I'm doing, even when I'm pouring at work. I've just got high adrenaline all the time. So shakes, dry mouth, it's just like a constant in my life yeah, since I was a child. Fine. <laughs> so, um, you know, again, that, that concept um, bringing through about kind of language and accessibility and b because it, it's, you, you know, what I think the, the very important thing within the message is we're not saying, hey, we're not going to have delicious coffee. We're oh, yeah. saying we're going to help people. We're going to help people understand it. I spend, I, I, my, all my friend group, all my family, um, they enjoy specialty coffee when I give it to them, but they don't make themselves because they tend not to understand yeah. what it is. And I spend my whole life getting ridiculed. I, yeah. Andrew, if you're watching, he messaged me uh, this morning, my best friend, just going, good luck talking about coffee today. It's just a running joke. So I, I spend all my life people reminding me that they don't have a clue what anything on that bag says. And bags I give them, they go, 
what does it, it gets to the point where they go, what does Columbia mean? It means yeah. nothing to them. They they learn by taste. Cool. So we'll just uh, yeah, say goodbye to the judges. They're just about ready. There you go. I'm going to cool. <clears throat> Round of applause for the judges. <clears throat> Good to uh, thank Yeah, <clears throat> and you, you, you know, and that, that's the real thing, isn't it? It, 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 it's, it's kind of like, even like in wine tasting, you know, when you hear a wine expert sometimes talking about all these com complex flavors and everything yeah. else, and then people go, yeah, I, I just like I just a red wine. Understand. Yeah, I don't, I've, I love advanced tasting notes myself. Mm. I love it, and in this room, if I'm at the back and you come and ask about the K7, I'll, I'll go to town, and I'll go to town with this, but it's just that first step and if you want just go and stand in Sainsbury's because I did this a couple of years ago I stood in Sainsbury's and I imagined mine was I was my dad because he just got given a French press and he was buzzing mm. and he just went what what do I buy because I didn't understand I went and stood in Sainsbury's imagined I was my dad looked at the shelf and it just didn't make any sense and there was nothing there to help sort of people into coffee so it's just about that helping. And I've written on there, it says um, in the inner circle, appreciation begins with understanding. It's what yeah. I always talk about. And it, you can only appreciate something if you understand it. So understanding is what I preach. Cool. Well, that's perfect. You're going to brew us yeah, uh, shots. some shots. Yep, yep. Um, so um, we're going to welcome uh, the team from Malconic. If you guys want to come up. Big round of applause yeah. for Malconic. For you. Hi, Jim. Hi, Rob. We'll uh, sit you guys down on the sofa, give you some water as well so you can keep hydrated. Um, just while Aaron prepares those. I'm more scared about serving you two than I was scaring him. You are making some special now. Yeah. Yeah, I can bring you the instant as well. But do you want to do the instant thing? Well, I, yeah, but we, if, if there's a little I bit I feel of like being mean just at these two because he said if, it now. If not, you know, but... Um, don't worry, we but won't be mean. But we'll just do the espresso. We won't be, be mean, good. don't worry. Nice. You've got, you got the mic. Just, just so the people online again. can hear us. So, um, so I, I've only once in my life had a World Barista Championship ch champion make me a coffee, and that was an instant coffee, so... Uh, <laughs> It might come back, Aaron. You might be onto something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, recipe... 18 in, 39 out. Cool. Um, it's, it was slightly longer yesterday. It's a bit... Um, it's not quite as fresh today, so we just found that shorter. Yeah. Um, just helped the, the texture particularly. And, and, and that's, you know, also a really kind of interesting point as well is, is that, you know having to, you know, potentially adjust as coffee degasses and changes yep. and, you know, that's kind of the level of competition where we're at now with the Yeah, finals. and this, it, this was a, it was a scramble to find a coffee. My coffee fell through twice. So, um, thankfully, Jam Jameson is an absolute hero for being able to have something so great and get it to me in such a quick time. So, thank you so much um, for the help. And it tastes phenomenal. But yeah, um, it's been a rush the past couple of weeks, learning. Yeah. But at least now you, you can start to uh, just relax a little bit. Yeah, it's done. You know, it's Get done. It. There is nothing more to do. So, beautiful cups. Guys in the audience, if we could just... Guys, sorry. Let's just give Aaron a little bit of respect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, um, beautiful cups here as well. Um, they make such a difference. Um, I've tried, we try across a variety of cups, different shapes. Not, these ones, just every single time, just come out as the most clean. Yep, perfect. The most clean. So I'll let perfect. you go. I'll take one of those. You're, you're going to have one, and then I'll let you serve the guys from Alconic. I'll bring so. the spoons over. Thank you very Actually, much. Actually, spoons. Speaking of which, got any spoons? I didn't bring spoons. Oh, well. I'll give it a little spin. We'll give it a good spin. A very good spin. But yeah, oh, comfy. Well, it's definitely juicy, and that was one of the, the it, it, it simple starts, flavor notes. So. It starts silky, so what, what, I, what I want is it, it, it's quite silky. So if you hold it in your mouth for five seconds...
if you move it around, it feels like you've bitten a piece of fresh fruit. Yeah. And it is a little drying on the finish, but that, the drying is very reminiscent. I do find it reminiscent. It's like a really good quality cacao or really good quality dark chocolate. It's, it's really pleasant. And I, I think the interesting thing, uh, like from your perspective, you know, obviously you're working very hard backstage making sure that uh, the grinders are cleaned and prepped. Obviously, there's no traces of another coffee coming through into that. But you rarely get to taste any of it. I think, yeah, I think so. And it's kind of seeing these grinders going out and nice and clean. And then we're like, oh, kind of, I'd like to have a sip of that. So it's nice to sit down and thank you for making that coffee for us. No so it's nice to, yeah, taste it as fresh as that and not try and grab it at the end of a, of a heat. So, I mean, obviously this year we've gone to uh, the E80 Supreme uh, single grinder. I mean, for, for, for me, absolutely phenomenal the, the way that it opens up uh, flavor characteristics. Um, and, and that's kind of in line with worlds where there's only one choice of grinder. Um, but, but you, I mean, for, for yourselves, how, how have you found the E80 in terms of your interaction sure. with customers and, uh, you know, Obviously, this is like the second year that we're doing it in competition, and so how has that impacted with the E80 in the UK market? There's been a lot of good feedback, and I think for ourselves, when it first came out, and when you first go to use it, you're kind of taken back by how quick it is. You know, doing a, a double shot in about three seconds, around yeah. 17, 18 grams, whatever your recipe is, was kind of, can we just check that again? Because it was very quick, and... The texture that was coming out was very uh, impressive, and then you're making your shots, and you kind of side by side test with your previous grinder or like an E65 as well. You kind of you are seeing differences in the in the cup. You know, generally, I'm thinking to other competitors as well. Just tend to be more sweetness has developed, and, and body's different too in the, in the espresso. Yeah, so I mean, obviously th um, with, with the E80, a um, few things that we can't use in competition: grind by weight. Um, but um, we got grind by weight on the, the on the on the bar there. Um, but I mean, in, in terms of that, in, uh, the production in a cafe and the simplicity of, of having that confidence every time. Um, accuracy on that is on a on a grind by weight, probably a tolerance of about point one, maybe point two yeah. of a gram at time. Is because it's. The way the weight cell works, it's a tearing every second. You yeah. know, up to, I think it's up to 6,000 times a second, so it's, it's working towards a target weight, so it can't stop at, that, you know, at the 18 grams because the grind will just implode, yeah. I think, if it did that. And, and what other changes can we make to the E80 in terms of uh, improving it on an already good grinder? I mean, if you've got an E80S and you wanted to, you could upgrade to the grind by weight to have that bit more consistency, or... If you're looking for a, um, a different profile in, in, your, in your espresso, then maybe upgrade to the Castile Burrs. And if you like brewing from the EK43 on espresso filter, you're almost leaning towards that EK shot because it's the same Castile Burrs. It's not the same size, but you're kind of leaning towards that style. Just the way it kind of cuts the coffee is, uh, yeah. is impressive again. So in, in terms of uh, Malconic, what does the future look like? Um, is it Busy. You know, be busy, yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's a good answer. So, um, I mean, obviously, the, um, for, for the home market, the X54. Yeah, there's the X54 we've got, that's on the back there as well, and that's a, it's a lovely um, all-rounder grinder, so, um, yeah. yeah. Or I, I guess not just home, but smaller cafe use as well, or like we've, additional grinder. Yeah, definitely, and we've got a few customers who've taken it on to be their, their decaf grinder, and they kind of, it's almost like a little Malconic family on the bar, and they might have an E80, E65, and then the X54 is there. Is there decaf, or maybe just doing the, the odd pour over or small batch brew? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got one in my kitchen, and I love it for all that round, all round yeah. as well. Yeah, um, but you know, I, I, I think you, you know we we underestimate, underestimate sometimes in a cafe the importance of of that bit of kit. Yes, the espresso machine is important. Um, but, but I mean, the grinder, and I think the, the nice thing in, in the last few years is a focus has come back on grinders. I mean, like, from, from Aaron's point of view, yeah. uh, from a competitor, like, how have you seen changes in grinders? He's, got, he's got his headset on. Uh, changes in terms of um, working, you know, with just one fixed grinder, having to do that and kind of... Have you developed just, the recipe? Or? 
Um, you just, you just, you have to work with the grinder. So you just have to um, get the grinder in and train. But every grinder has its quirks. I found this one pretty easy to work with. It also, did, from a competition point of view, when it can grind in three and a half seconds, it's very useful for speed uh, on bar. Um, but no, yeah, um, it's, it's as you said, it's just playing, knowing your recipe, um, and then. The main thing is the taste, being able to fiddle it. But the micro adjustments you can get on that from backstage were exceedingly good. You were looking at sort of every step. I was only looking at about two second change, which gave me really good range to really dial into exactly where you want it to be. And it is that, that beautiful, just simple adjustment on the it's ETA just a as well. It's yeah, like, it was great. So very good. Let's give a big round of applause for all the hard work that Malconic do for us during the competition. Um, I'll, can I just second that? Can yeah. I just second that? Because you, you all don't get to see them in the back with the hoovers, hoovering out of coffee every single competitor. Yeah. They really do <laughs> go above and beyond. So, um, And one more time for Aaron Stein. A big round of applause from Grumpy Mule. Um, cool. We are going to be back in uh, a short while. Um, check on the schedule online. Um, oh, we're going to be gosh. talking to more yeah. of our sponsors. We really couldn't do this without our sponsors um, and vitally important in terms of what we do here, but also helping develop the UK coffee community uh, and working together with the partners is superb. So we'll see you soon. Bye.
Okay, welcome back everyone. So, we've had a fresh delivery of our beautiful trophies. So can we get an ooh? They are, yeah, they're over here. They are lovely. They've been made for us by Clockwork Espresso and they've done a great job as usual. So excited to see who those go to at the end of the day. But for now, let's welcome our next competitor. We've got Vag from Area 51 Coffee Roasters. And let's welcome our judges on. Hey, good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Thank you. Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. How are you? Are you good? Hi. Lovely. So, a couple of. Are you all standing comfortably? Yeah, thank you. Can I have my music, please? And time. Over the years in coffee, we've seen a constant increase in cup quality and complexity of flavors in the cup. However, as a barista, when I present and describe such complex coffees to my guests, I often feel a disconnection between the flavor descriptors I give them and the flavors they find in the cup. And I've been asking myself why. And I came to realize that this disconnection will persist unless we guide our guests through their whole drinking journey and offer to them a more mindful drinking experience. So the first step for me was to develop a new tasting protocol that will allow us to experience all these complex flavors together. And I call this technique the mindful tasting technique. It uses a combination of pauses between the sips, as well as holding the liquid on our palate at specific times. Now the pauses between the sips give the necessary time to the aromatics to reach the flavor library of our brain, which is called the gustatory cortex. And it is that extra time that allows us to fully experience all these complex flavors. Also, holding the liquid on our palate at specific times leads to a richer and more transparent tactile experience. So today, judges, we utilize this protocol to enhance your drinking experience. So you can enjoy all the amazing flavor of this unique coffee that I'm about to serve you. But I want to take you back to when it all began for me. Late last year, when I first tasted Lot 836, a natural anaerobic geisha produced by Kai Johnson on his Finca Los Alpes. Deep in that Panamanian rainforest, on the slopes of Tizingal Volcano, up at 1,700 meters above sea level, his green tip geisha matured way more slowly than any of his other coffees, which increases the complexity of flavors in the final cup. And Kai Johnson enhances that with his 72-hour natural anaerobic fermentation which provides structure and this high quality sweetness that you will enjoy in the cup today. Judges, when I tasted these complex flavors and high quality sweetness, I knew then and there that to fully experience this coffee, we need a special place and this mindful drinking experience. So today, we will start with the espresso. And I want you to enjoy this espresso over three sips. In your first sip, I want you to look for more broader fruit flavors of forest berries. 
this way will gouge our gustatory cortex for the flavors to come. I want you also to enjoy this coating sensation of this first sip. In your second sip, the flavors become more transparent due to the 10 second pause and the cooler drinking temperature. And I want you to hold that second sip on your palate for five seconds because this is where you're gonna enjoy this amazing strawberry flavor. Now just the third sip is all about tactile. A medium weight with that creamy texture. And you will also enjoy a long finish that will remind me of dried apricot. Now judges, the complexity of this coffee peaks at 55 degrees Celsius. So I'll stir it with my frozen spoons to get you to this temperature for best complexity and flavor clarity. But for now, please have a sip of water so we can all be aligned together. And right after that, I will pass the espresso in front of you so you can evaluate this crema. You're evaluating this one. You're evaluating that one. You're evaluating this one. You're evaluating this one. So when I serve you the espresso, I want you to start your timer. Use these pauses so you can enjoy this amazing 836 from Kai Johnson with this mindful coffee experience. Please enjoy that. Judges, when you're ready. Moving on to one of my most favorite expressions of this Kai Geisha. And I love this raspberry note. When I combine this, excuse me, this strawberry note correction, when I combine this coffee with milk, and I would love for us to taste it together. So let me give you the tasting protocol for the milk course. Stir five times to enhance creamy texture and enjoy over two sips with 10 second pause between them. First sip, look for that strawberry and milk chocolate. And second sip, that strawberry turns, with, turns into strawberry cheesecake. And also, we have this amazing creamy texture.
not just this. Kai highlighted the fruity character of his geisha with his natural anaerobic fermentation. And I wanted to maximize that in the drink for you today. For that reason, I changed my recipe. 20 in, 36 out. So you can highlight the strawberry note in the drink. Please enjoy that. I also want to give this coffee a coating sensation. So instead of roasting the coffee darker, we extended the mylar phase of the roast and then dropped it 208 degrees Celsius in 10 minutes 30 for a cleaner finish. Please enjoy that. And I want to further enhance these fruity qualities to the drink. For that reason, I need the special milk, higher in fats and proteins. And the Gensi cows from the estate dairy in Somerset produce exactly the milk that I want. 3.5% protein, 4.5% fat for this delicious creamy mouthfeel. And to that I will pair one part espresso, three parts, milk steamed at 55 degrees Celsius, and when combined together with a mindful tasting protocol, you'll enjoy this fruity character of this geisha that we all work so hard for. Please enjoy that. on to our signature course. For these last mindful moments together, I drew inspiration from the world of wine, who have been creating tasting experience for decades to elevate that Janssen Geisha in your signature drink. And I love the complex fruity qualities of this amazing coffee. And I want to elevate that. And I did it by taking a red apple, specifically the sweet tango varietal, because its maturity cycle takes way longer than any of the other varietals, creating complex and bright flavors like my Janssen Geisha. And then, in order to bring the complexity of this ingredient, 72 hour anaerobic fermentation in this sealed container, and that created a more pronounced complex acidity. And then, to highlight sweetness, slow cooked in the oven, 10 days, 65 degrees Celsius, before I strain it, creating this amazing liquid, which is sweet and complex, that when I add just 40 grams of this, it creates a new flavor of pineapple. And now that we have flavor depth, it's time for flavor clarity. And I created Cascara Kombucha. 50 grams geisha cascara from Kai's farm, and the two liter kombucha fermentation, five days at room temperature. And I created this refreshing kombucha that opens up the flavors when I add 40 grams of it and my four shots of geisha. And now, my four shots, for the same way as your espresso, 18 in, 38 out, that have been chilled to this iced rock, and then I I kept it in this hyper chiller to preserve all the volatile aromatics. I will bring these flavors in perfect harmony using this magnetic stirrer. And I will serve you at a temperature around 8 degrees Celsius, where I found the perfect flavor synergy. To open up the flavors even more and give you a wine sensation to the drink. I will pass the entire drink through this aerator. That will really highlight that syrupy mouthfeel and that pineapple note. 
judges to fully experience this drink, please follow my instructions. Take in the aroma of raspberry and then enjoy over three sips with 10 seconds pause between them. Now, after you take in the aroma, in the first sip, look for that raspberry. Second sip, that raspberry becomes juicier. And third sip, look for that pineapple note. And to highlight that pineapple note even more, I want you to swirl the glass before each sip. Now, judges, my duty as a barista is not just to bring out the most complex flavors out of our coffees, because these flavors will not be realized unless we offer our guests more mindful drinking experiences. With that, I want to thank you for being part in this amazing world of mindful tasting. Please enjoy this drink, and that will be my time. All right. Big round of applause for Vac. Come on over. <laughs> Great job, man. Thank How you. How do you Thank feel? You. Now I can sleep for a month. I bet. <laughs> yeah. As, as long as my lovely thing can give me a month off there. That's, hi guys. Hi guys. It's one month off. Is okay? Yeah. Uh, felt really good. Felt really good. Um, yesterday was a, a, a like an intense day. You had like it was intense, wasn't yeah, it? It was very yeah, yeah. fast paced yesterday. Mm. Yeah. But today I think it all went uh, a bit mm. better. I was more relaxed. I, I enjoyed. The, much more trust, which is hard, <laughs> but, but and, uh, hopefully I give I it the experience to the people. I think your enjoyment really comes across. Yeah? Oh, like, you, you really feel like you're having fun and then we're having fun enjoying, like, watching you have fun, do you know what I mean? Like, and so that's really nice to, to be part Thank of that when, yeah. when you're watching it. Yeah. 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 It just feels like there's so mm. much passion there. You had so many cool gadgets as well. I can tell you everything, like, no secrets here. Oh, no secrets. yes, tell us Ask about the gadgets. The um, four-spoon stirrer, where's that come from? Because I want one. Well, uh, the gentleman who created this is just right there in the front. Shout out. So the, the idea behind <laughs> that is, like, you have four judges and you want to offer the, to them, uh -huh. like, the same experience. That's why you like tell them have a sip of water, so you all calibrate with the same water, yeah. and then you don't want the first espresso to be hotter than the last one, right? So you want to create more consistent yeah. um, like experience to all of them. So uh, we tried to think out, outside of the box, and that's what we came up with. I, I, I love more. it. I mean, are you going to use that in your day-to-day -day life now? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll patent it first, Brando. We'll patent it first. We'll patent. <laughs> Oh, that was really, really cool. <laughs> and then obviously you've got the aeration mm -hmm. and the cooling as well. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. Like how, the aeration device, I don't think I've seen something quite like that before. Yeah, I think, I think the idea behind that is you... Oh, our judges ah, are done. That's say bye to them. Thank you so much. All right, thank thanks, you. judges. Do we say you. thanks? Thank you so much. I appreciate Round of applause. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, guys. Cool, yes. Aeration. Aeration. So the idea behind that was to create a signature drink that the flavors are easy to be distinguished, mm -hmm. because the espresso is like a concentrated drink, right? And you want to find that drink in the signature beverage. So you try to make it a bit more open without diluting it too much to lose the, the nice texture the espresso has. Uh -huh. So um, yeah, aeration. Uh, Works. That was really <laughs> it cool. It worked for this coffee for sure. And the magnetic stirrer, another yeah, cool Yeah, it worked today. It was a, uh, like, I, yeah, it was yeah, spinning yeah. really fast today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, like, whoa. New day, new opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was amazing. Really, really cool. So we're going to get um, Steve from Chimbali to come Ooh. and join us. Here he is. Yes. 
and uh, make yourself comfortable. And uh, we've got space for one more person on the sofa. So does anyone want to come drink some of Vag's coffee with us? Have come we on, got guys. any volunteers? Don't be shy. No one wants any. Don't be shy. <laughs> you go, you've been volunteered. There he is. Yes. All right. Thanks for volunteering. OK, great. Yeah, brew away. So what would you like to drink? <laughs> just, as, just joking, just espresso for you today. Get, you don't get a choice. Milk. So we've got a red geisha. Geisha. We have a geisha varietal yeah. from Panama, uh -huh. from Chiriki, Panama, more specifically. That is one of the best coffee, if not the best that I've ever tasted. Yeah. And the thing is, with competition, it's a bit tricky. I would put it this way because sometimes you taste this one coffee and you're like, this needs to be shared with people. Mm -hmm. So, as with everything good in life, you want to share the good stuff. Uh, you don't want to keep them to yourself because they're just so beautiful and so unique that you might not have the opportunity again to taste these coffees. Especially with these high-end coffees, each year is different, climate change plays a big part to it. So, when you have this good coffee, then uh, you should better find a platform to, yeah, <laughs> to share it. Enjoy and, it while you can, right? Uh, yeah, and the BC, the Barista Championship, I think, is the, probably, if not the best, uh, mm. one of the best platforms to and share. And do you have mind. much of it left, or just what's in the hopper? That's the last of it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We're very lucky. Very, very lucky. The reason Amazing. for that is the crops are so small. So like, you, you can pick all the ripest cherries, you can do the best version you, you want, but then the coffee goes through sorting after sorting and then test rows, and then you like, uh, I'll do two, three, four test rows until I find the best one. So uh, that's how much <laughs> is left. Amazing. Well, what's your plan? What are you going to do with the rest of it? Probably freeze it or uh, share it with uh, ah. people that uh, they want to try this. Uh, yeah. Fruit bomb with this lively acidity. Uh -huh. so. Fruit bomb is a great descriptor. Yes, I like that. yes, yes. It's a bit generic for the... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm, awesome. uh, this is uh, amazing. Hopefully our two lovely guests will, uh, will agree with that. I'm yeah, sure they will. will agree, guys, yeah. 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 <laughs> so is anyone going to pick up the microphone or are you both scared? <laughs> there sorry, we sorry. go. Hi, Steve. Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You know. All right. Oh, there's some water there as well. I'm going to help yourselves. Thank you. There you go. Amazing. Thank you so Amazing. much. Please Any enjoy instructions? That. Just enjoy it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> One thing you can do is just close your eyes, smell, and then just enjoy. Don't worry about any fruit. Like, just enjoy it. So much pressure. We're all if watching it's, If it's not good, just keep it to yourself. And, uh, oh. ah, what did you have for breakfast, Steve? <laughs> What meal did you have before and they don't, don't like the flavors? No, no uh, I'm joking. <laughs> would you like awesome. one? I, I would actually like uh, one, yes, I have please. two more cups. You can share this one <laughs> if together. If that's okay. 100%. That's I don't know if... Oh, awesome. Yeah. No, Great. that's amazing, honestly. Is it? Yeah? Oh, I'm really very nice. excited to try it. Is cool, it a I'm short gonna... trip to Panama for you? Have you been to Panama before, uh, Steve? Mm. No, I'm afraid no. Today is your day Maybe because no. you're going to Panama through these flavors. Oh, thank you so much. You're very welcome, my friend. <laughs> Thanks for all cool, the help. Uh, I'm going to take a seat over here. I'm going to just wait for this bro. Sorry, I just kicked you, didn't I? It's okay. It's nothing personal. No, no, don't worry. <laughs> all right, so you made the spoon contra contraption. I did make the spoons. Let's yes, chat I about that. Spoons. When, um, when did that come to you? In a dream? Um, no, it was actually it Vag's idea. Yeah. Um, so Vag came to me and he said, I need a way to stir four espressos at the same time. And that was it. That was the, that was the brief. Uh, so that, the, the spoons that you saw on stage were actually the second prototype of that. <laughs> um, came together over V2. About, yeah, V2, V2. <laughs> over about two months. Um, a bit of back and forth, a bit of um, design process going on there. But um, yeah, I think it did the job well. It wasn't too complicated, and I think that's uh, that was a big problem. It's also it could just have become so fun yeah. to see. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, yeah, come join us on the sofa. Oh, well, relax. Ah. Uh. <sighs> <laughs> 
Tell me everything about this coffee. You guys drank all of it. Uh, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Should I have to stay? No, I'm no, so no. glad I, I got to taste that. No, that was amazing. Great. So, um, do you have any questions for Vag? I assume you know about his routine if you've been helping him prepare. I've seen it once or twice. Yeah. All right. So I'll pass over to Steve over here. Um, so yeah, ask away. I absolutely adore these spoons. I mean, this, yeah. that was amazing. Um, <laughs> we'll arrange, some, we'll arrange it's something for you. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, but it, it's funny how everything that you use is very um, chemistry-like. I, I, I adore this. That was brilliant. And this little spoon that was just a small kind of Touch, yeah. yeah, that was brilliant. And um, how long did it take you to, to, to go through all of this? Oh. It wasn't done in a day, was it? Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were. Yeah, something nah, like that. Yeah. I think <laughs> the whole thing, the whole process of it took like three weeks, and then we had the prototype. We could like go back and forth, see like what are the right spoons for this specific cup, and then find the right tray so they can all fit next to each other. So when you stir them at the same time, like you have the, the, the end result is the same for all of them. And the interesting thing also was. Uh, freezing the spoons because, you, like, mm -hmm. with this specific coffee, it tastes so much better when it's uh, lower temperature, around 50, 52 degrees, around there. And so you have only two ways. Either you're going to let the espresso just relax <laughs> there and at the same time continue speaking to the judges, or you, you bring it down to this temperature, like, deliberately. So in the heats, we had frozen spoons, and they were still at the same time in order to offer the same experience to the judges. And now, when you have four espressos, uh, you try to do the same thing. So yeah. either I would do, we would do four at the same time, or like two and go this uh, thing. Yeah, but can I think, you like kind of hold two spoons? In yeah, one of, is that yeah. possible? But that was like the <laughs> surprise, you know? I was like, oh, oh my god, yeah. that's brilliant. It totally just felt like so mindful, like so much attention had gone into all these things. Oh, another thing is the stand that the grinder is on. I noticed mm. that. Well, what's the choice behind that? The choice was that the table we, I was training on in the office was not long enough, not as long as this bench. Uh -huh. So when I had the grinder on the floor, on, on the counter, I couldn't just uh, move freely. So I either had to buy a longer table or uh, just try to think okay, outside of the box. Cool. So we just raised it up, and then I had to raise also the scale. So under the scale, there's another small tray. So it's easy for me to, to move the scales, yeah. be, to move the handles. Because I think my philosophy be behind like a technical routine in, the, in, the, in this platform, in the championship, you, you need to execute your barista skills flawlessly, but also you need, you need to show that you're quite comfortable with like doing two things at the same time, and you know, if something is meant to go wrong, it will happen on that <laughs> today. So yeah. yeah, so it was. Um, yeah. We tried to find the right stand, <laughs> so they <laughs> ate it, and, <laughs> and that was another <laughs> journey. And no. then we put some at the slippery mats as well because the, it's, a, it's a powerful grinder, so it moves as well. So uh -huh. we had to put some mats as well to see how if it uh, wow, moves. Wow, see, so, this is all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you just. You wouldn't even know just yeah, seeing the routine. The it's really the, interesting. The, the interesting thing is, like, you're not going to score anymore if you have a stand, but mm -hmm. if that's going to make you more relaxed, yeah. you can bring out a feeling that like, you, you, you're doing it as you're doing it every day. So that's, that's what the idea. Definitely. All done for the <laughs> Well, <laughs> the thank you so much. So we give one last big round of applause to Vag. Thank you. Amazing. So you're welcome to stay or go. It's um, completely up to you. Same for you. To I'm going to chat to Steve. <laughs> yes. Okay. So Steve. I'll come by myself. Let's chat about machines. Oh, it's it's fine. You got me. Um, so you've been involved in pretty much all of the yeah, heats. Yeah. All of the heats. Yes, all of them. Um, traveling all around the place traveling with your Chimberly team. Tell us what that's been time. like. Um, so we've been all around the heat with this truck and all the equipment, um, moving around 
upload everything, just install everything, and put everything back together. That was yeah, that was pretty intense. And, yeah, yeah, but it's a it's a lot of work, isn't it? And you got to make sure the machines yeah, are clean yeah. in between each everything, competitor. So, yeah, everything's the working yes. smoothly. But you, you enjoy it. I mean, your team always look like yeah. you're having a lot of fun. Where are I they? I believe so. Ah. Got Lucy over there. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, that, that this, it's amazing, honestly, to be able to participate with, with the SEA. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's a, such a cool thing to do. Um, traveling around the country as well with this, a little bit, you know, just helping everyone, to be honest. Um, and the installation and the cleaning of the machine is Do you just... have any tunes that you put on in the van when you're traveling? Who oh, picks uh, the music? I am pretty sure uh, <coughs> Lucy will rem remember for life. <laughs> Yes, <clears throat> this is bringing karaoke vibe uh, <laughs> memories, trust me, so. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to hear this, trust me. Are you me. sure? No, 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 no. Maybe no. next time. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to chat about the M200, which yeah. is the machine that the, has been used for the competition, so all the competitors have been getting to grips with it and how it works. Obviously, it's had a fixed specification yeah. for the competition, so there's, there's only a few things that you're kind of allowed to change within the rules, but what else does the machine do that we've not seen? So, um, um, the M200 is the M200 GT1 for the competition, which stands for uh, group temperature. Uh -huh. um, so, every single group will have a different bo separate boiler, um, where within our Chimbali uh, in-house software, it regulates the temperature and st it stabilizes the temperature. So it's, it's always a constant right temperature. It can be adjusted, adjusted by 0 0.5 increment. Um, so it's pretty wow. precise. And there's and a separate boiler for each group head, is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. So that's how you get that, that temperature that's stability. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's also pre-wear infusion, I Yeah, believe. so um, something that, we, that they don't use um, during the competition, um, this can be set up with a pre-wet and pre-infusion, which is um, a, a low pressure um, in difference de depending on the flow rate, the flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. So the flow rate will be different with, mm -hmm. from the pre-wet and pre-infusion, everything at low pressure. Cool, awesome. And uh, what was the other thing I was going to ask you about? Oh, yes, bean to cups. We obviously know that Chimberly do a lot of, of bean to cup stuff. So I just wanted to chat to you about like what makes those bean to cup machines special. So um, things that we didn't, well, we, there is a lot of things that the M200 can do. Um, regarding, for example, um, PGS, which is um, the perfect grinding system that, uh -huh. that can be combined with our grinders. That adjusting yeah, the grinder. Yeah, you were talking about that earlier, and the machines and the yeah, grinder yeah. connect so via Bluetooth. They, they, they connect together, they speak to each other That's and really adjust cool. automatically. Um, that helps as well consistency in terms of the flow of the coffee. Um, there's as well the um, tubo, tubo steam grinder. Uh, the tubo steam, sorry. Oh my God. The automatic steam, the tubo steam TS4, that is bringing um, perfect consistency in terms of the milk, depending on the level of froth that you wish. Um, all of these can be um, seen obviously on the M200, not this one, but everything is the same on the bean to cup machine. So we have separate boiler for the group. Um, we have a possibility to have the turbo steam. We have the PGS installed. So everything is all about consistency, temperature, grinding, and I forgot something, and the milk system. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That means that people who don't have as much experience yeah, yeah, yeah. with so the machines can the, still get an amazing the result, The idea right? is to, to, to have a perfect cup of coffee, mm -hmm. no matter which skill. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, just wanted to say thanks so much no to problem. you and your team for hosting us here as well and for keeping everything working and clean and ticking <laughs> along. Thank you so much. And the good vibes. So thank you so much, Steve. No problem. And should we just give a big round of applause to everyone from Chimberley who's been hosting us here today. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thank you so much. OK, cool. So we will be back very shortly with our next competitor. We've only got two, two left to go until the end of the day. So things are getting tight. Um, and yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye.
Hello and welcome back to UKBC 2023. Um, I'm over here on the Kavoya stand. They're going to be tasting uh, coffee at the end of uh, this set, the next set. Um, but in the meantime, they're brewing up some great coffees on their stand. Uh, you can also find out a little bit more about the company and what they do. Um, but we're also going to be chatting about that after um, the performance as well. So without further ado, I'm going to try and walk backwards. Um, always a tricky one. Um, but we are going to be here with our next competitor. So let's give a big UK SCA welcome to Jack Ellis from Grumpy Mule. And let's bring on those judges. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, how are we doing? Okay. Hi, hey guys. All ready? Lovely. Can I have my music, please? Time. Judges, this is my first time competing in a Bristol competition, and I honestly didn't think I would make it through to this stage. I loved competing in the heats, and I'm really happy I could come back and present more coffee for you all. But today, I believe I have the perfect gateway into anaerobic coffee. So I'll tell you more about that. I'll prepare the espressos for your signature beverages, as I'll need to give them time to cool. So today, judges, I'll be speaking to you about balance. And I believe balance can be a very hard thing to achieve in life and in coffee. Now, I don't quite have the wealth of experience that a lot of the other baristas do today, as I'm quite new to this space. But one thing I do have is a fresh perspective. And an observation I made whilst I was picking my coffee is although a lot of these coffees tasted wacky and different, I believe a lot of these complex processing methods and fermentations are almost a step out of touch with what the general public can perceive coffee to be, making them maybe taste off or a bit weird. So if I had a pound for every time my mum tried an anaerobic coffee and said it didn't taste like coffee, I'd be a very rich man. But my mum's comfort in coffee is instant, as with a lot of people. And it's a big jump to go from something like instant to say an anaerobic fermentation. But I believe my coffee today can begin to bridge that gap. And it's good enough for a competition, but also still approachable for someone like my mum to enjoy. So today, judges, I'll be using an heirloom varietal from Gargari Gatiti, from Banco Village in the Yergeshev region of Ethiopia, where this coffee was grown at 2,000 meters above sea level. This coffee was roasted 16 days ago using a slow roast profile with a 17% development time that best highlights the unique characteristics in this coffee. With this medium roast, I believe we have achieved a roast profile that finds balance by calming acidity and heightening sweetness. I'll be using a recipe today of 19 grams in and 42 grams out for all three courses. I also found this recipe is the perfect recipe to balance and enhance the acidity and sweetness created by the roast profile. When we come to taste, you can expect medium to high sweetness, medium acidity, and a medium bitterness. You can also expect a syrupy texture, a medium body, 
and the long, lingering, pleasant finish. You can also expect flavor notes of pink grapefruit, Seville orange, dried strawberry, and lavender. Judges, this coffee is quite unique. It uses a supernatural process. This is a part natural, part controlled fermentation. Now, this is new to Ethiopia. This is where cherries are spread in a thick layer in a semi-porous box, restricting access to sunlight and airflow. This extends the drying time and increases the natural fermentation. This isn't an anaerobic process, but it is very similar, being a uh, process that limits airflow. And this is what I believe gives this coffee such wonderful balance. Balance between the complex fermentation and the natural processing. Thank you. Judges, when I serve these espressos, please stir 10 times. I find this, in, com in combination with waiting a little while, will aid in the calming of the acidity and the heightening of that wonderful sweetness. Please assess the floral aroma as well. I also found that brewing at 93 degrees in conjunction with the roast profile chosen and the recipe provided, please pop your spoons in these pots also once you're done, that this will enhance the fantastic quality of this espresso, but whilst also still leaving it approachable for someone like my mum to enjoy. So judges, please enjoy. Judges, let me tell you a little bit about the milk drink that I'll be preparing for you today. I'll be using milk from the Estate Dairy in Bristol. I chose this milk as the Estate Dairy uses a specially formulated diet for their cows, which I believe best complements the coffee I'm using. I'll be using freeze distilled milk today. The reason for this is a common complaint I get from my mum is the coffee is too bitter and needs sugar. Now, I'm not inherently against people using sugar or syrups in coffee, if it's for a sweet treat. But I believe a perfectly balanced espresso has no need for added sweetness, but can be transformed by the natural sweetness in this wonderful milk. So I'll be using a mixture of freeze distilled and standard milk today. I found that just using freeze distilled milk overpowered the coffee, and using none at all was underwhelming from a taste experience perspective. So I'll be mixing this at a ratio of one part freeze distilled and three parts standard milk. I froze this milk at home and then slowly defrosted it in the fridge over around six hours, upside down. This removes some of the water content and intensifies flavor like sweetness and texture. I'll also be serving this at a ratio of one part espresso to three parts milk. I'll also be heating your milk today, judges in the region of 55 degrees Celsius. When we come to taste these milk drinks, you can expect a creamy texture and flavor notes 
of caramel toffee. Vanilla ice cream. And shortbread biscuit. Judges, when I serve these milk drinks, please stir five times in a folding motion. This will combine all the freezer distilled milk and espresso, ensuring each sip is as balanced and consistent as the last. I love this coffee, and I hope you do as well, especially in this little milk drink. It is incredibly sweet, and a brilliant way for someone like my mum to begin to enjoy specialty coffee. There we are, sir. Thank you. Very much. There we are, sir. Thank you. There we are. Last but not least. Thank you very much, judges. I'm going to have a tidy up, prepare for your signature drinks. But please sit back, enjoy. I'll be with you in a moment. Judges, for my signature drink, I wanted to create something that was not only delicious, but representative of something me and my friends might drink on a weekend, always trying to balance work and social life. So, I wanted to recreate an IPA, because I believe the flavors in my coffee best emulate one of these beers. So, my first ingredient, I'll be using 0.7 grams of Baobab Superfruit Powder. I'll also use four milliliters of pink peppercorn syrup. I created this by taking one part pink peppercorns, eight parts muscovado sugar, and eight parts water. Combine them on a hob on a medium heat for around 30 minutes until I created a syrupy consistency. This, in conjunction with the baobab, will create a citra hops tasting note. I will also use five milliliters of freeze distilled blueberry juice. I created this by blending fresh blueberries and passing them through a sieve and then freeze distill them in the same way I did with the milk. This will create a Morello cherry flavor note. I will also use 35 mils of freeze distilled pineapple juice. Once again, I blended fresh pineapples, passed them through a sieve, and freeze distilled them in the same way I did with the milk. This will create a flavor note of lime zest. I'll combine these ingredients in a soda siphon. This will create a sparkling texture and a thick foam, reminiscent of a classic IPA. Judges, the craft beer industry has boomed in the last few years. 
and I've also been part of that. And I really believe we can engage more people within specialty coffee, talking to them in means that they understand and that they're familiar with, like craft beer. And that's what this signature drink is for. Thank you very much. Judges, please swill this milk drink five times before drinking. Yeah, thank you very much. There we go. So to reiterate your flavor notes, judges, Morello cherry, lime zest, and citra hops. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So judges, I hope you've enjoyed the balance I've had on show today. Balance of simple ideas and complex processes. And hopefully, very soon, all of our mum, mums can be drinking some funky coffee. Time. Big round of applause for Jack. Come on around here, Jack. It's all done now. It's over. Um, that's it. I mean, um, first first year competing. First year. Uh, through to semifinals, through to the finals. <laughs> um, yeah, well done. Thank you. Um, you know, no small achievement for sure. Um, Thank you. And uh, you know, I, I, and it's great to see new talent. So I mean. Um, in, in terms of, I, I guess, a slight whirlwind uh, of yeah. uh, uh, kind of, I'm going to do it, and then kind of pushing forward and going, shit, and through to the semis. Oops, sorry. Um, <laughs> but um, it was that. That, well. that wasn't on, on time, but probably on camera. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, um, but, but yeah, so then, you know, it is that thing that you're going from uh, heats with no signature drink, signature drink. Started thinking about this IPA concept and how, how did that develop? Um, well, like I said, I, wa I wanted something, and I, I hope it shows through my routine, something that's quite close to home, quite close to my heart. Um, obviously, going from heats to signature drinks, it's a big jump. It's kind of, you don't really know where to start. So best start with something that I enjoy and like and I can link flavors to and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of where that, that idea came from and, and as we ran with it more. Would you say goodbye to well. Gigi's Thank you so very much. Cheers. quickly? Thank you. Yep, so, um, uh, yep, so uh, something you care about, bringing it through on stage mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah, and I guess this is where we ended up. So in terms of, you know, using uh, complementary flavors uh, to create something else, mm -hmm. um, you, you, the uh, pink pe peppercorn syrup sounded really interesting. Yeah. Mus Muscovado sugar. And so uh, how did you um, kind of find that that added and create to that IPA kind of flavor? It was a lot of trial and error, as with a lot of things with um, signature drinks. Um, I feel like the, the Muscovado sugar with a little sort of molasses kind of mm -hmm. flavor. Um, it was just really nice. I tried a few different um, sort of ratios, obviously. Sometimes the peppercorns were a bit fiery and had been a bit too much. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that, it was a really nice balance. The peppercorns sort of came through, but it kind of combined with the uh, barbell, like I said, mm -hmm. like really nice citric flavors mm -hmm. to get that like citra hops mm -hmm. taste note that I, I was keen to try and aim for. Yeah, because, I mean, it, it's really interesting with, you know, particularly when you look at the beer industry and those kind of things, you know, we, you know, I mean, hops are naturally, you know, bitter, um, but, but then there is this complexity in that bitterness and particularly, mm. you know, citra hops, you, you know, aptly named because you do get this vibrancy and citrusy yeah. kind of balance in there as well that kind of pushes it forward. I mean, that, that there's a, a, a citra IPA that uses citra hops and that is like super yeah. kind of fruit forward and things. Yeah, so yeah. 
I, um, I sort of had a couple of conversations with the guys at um, Northern Monk in Leeds as well, mm -hmm. trying to incorporate a couple of ideas. They obviously mentioned Citra Hops and yeah. things like that. And so it was, a, it was a really interesting process to sort of develop. So. Cool. Well, you're going to make some uh, coffees for us. We're going to invite fine. the guys from Cavoya um, over here, formerly known as Olam Speciality Coffee. Um, so, um, recipe was a 19 and then 42? 42 out, yeah. Cool. So, obviously, um, pulling it um, at, what, about 2.2 in terms of ratio. Mm -hmm. So, just taking a little bit longer than a standard 1 to 2 ratio. Yeah. Um, so, but again, I think, you know, sometimes pushing that extra... Um, bit of liquid through you do bring that bit of balancing into play yeah 100%. very nicely and um i'm i'm a big fan i mean uh I've, I've been kind of working uh with italian companies and things in the past and you know and they they really celebrate like campari and things like that that have that extra bitterness in yeah. it but as, as a real positive and i think when when bitterness is done in quality um, then it's, it's a really positive thing. Yeah, 100%. I think, like I said, being quite new to this sort of stuff, you, a lot of people perceive bitterness as a negative. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it can be used in a really positive way, um, if done right, like you said, in yeah. balance. <laughs> Nicely. <laughs> yeah. Works. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice, um, really nice flavour profile of this coffee. And, 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 like I say, we readily accept it in beer. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, it's like... It's welcome. Oh, well, well it, it's beer, so we, you know, we like that bitterness. Yeah, but, and I, um, I think the, the craft beer industry is, is also getting away from that a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in the past, maybe beers my dad might have liked have been really, really bitter, really on that sort of end of things. But um, you're getting some really fruity, really creative notes out of it. So it's, uh, it's certainly, certainly some fun things going on there, Dad. Cool. Let me just get you guys a little bit of water, just so you are ready for these delicious coffees. Uh, so just uh, while Jack's pulling those coffees, do you want to just introduce yourself and let us know who you are? Uh, hello, I'm Simon, and this is Massimo, and we work for Cavoya Specialty. We're a green coffee importer. Uh, we were formerly Olam Specialty, uh, and formerly, formerly Schluter. Um, but we've recently had a, a rebrand, and so this year we're Cavoya. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and so kind of what, what was um, one of the, the kind of main uh, transitions in terms of that name and, uh, you know, you know the, 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 the purpose of the rebranding, really? I think the purpose was to create some separation from Olam, who are a, a multinational uh, agri-industrial importer, uh, we are given carte blanche to operate uh, within the specialty field that we know best. Um, we, have a, we have a partner office as well in the US and uh, I think we felt like uh, being named the same as our sort of multinational mother company wasn't helping us so we wanted to create some separation. Thanks Jack. No problem. Perfect, and um, we'll just wait for the, for the other shots. So um, here we go. Let's have a look. Now, I, I'm, am I right in believing that uh, this is one of your coffees? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and, and that genuinely wasn't planned. Um, <laughs> we, you know, as we, we kind of um, uh, sorted out yeah. the order for the um, sponsors uh, initially, and then pulled numbers at random yesterday for competing, but it, it just so happens it's all aligned beautifully. So, cheers. Worked out quite nicely. Cheers, guys. Enjoy. Good Congratulations, well. Jack. This is great. Thank you. It's good, isn't it? Mm. And the lavender's really prominent in it. Yeah. And, and also, you know, like, uh, you, you got that grapefruit note coming through as well. Yeah, in there, yeah, yeah. Which is super, super delicious, super tasty. Um, so, um, am I right in um, thinking that uh, to Kavoya is a kind of coffee voyage, a, a merge of the words? And I, I kind of, when I heard that, I thought that that kind of, you know, really touched with me in terms of um, the, the feeling of, of what the company is about as well. 
Uh, yeah, I think you've said it exactly. The uh, the journey it took to arrive at the name was a was a long winded one, and it had to be done in lockstep with the office in the U.S. as well and our sourcing offices around the world. But uh, Voyage and doing it collaboratively, it, mm. it, they'd be the seeds, the germs from which the name grew. Yeah. So, uh, so Jack, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, using their coffee, how did you then kind of, you, you've obviously got this green that's, that's great, how did you then go about approach the, the roasting and, you know, developing it for espresso for, for them? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, wonderful green coffee, um, but the... Uh, the, obviously the development time, um, 17%, we wanted to get that like real juiciness out of it and keep those florals as well. Um, in terms of sort of ratio, when we were playing around with that, um, I actually had it in the heat of much sort of higher shot coming out, um, but we found that the juiciness was like really prominent when we pulled it back a little bit, so it's um, jumped around a few ratios um, over the heat semis and things like that, but I've, each time it's pulling really nice shots every time, so it's, uh, yeah, it's lovely. Cool. Do, do you guys have any questions for Jack? That's great. Uh, what have you learned from this process that perhaps you didn't expect to learn? I don't think we've got enough time for me to <laughs> name all those things. Um, obviously, like being a first-time competitor, it, it's a really steep learning curve. Um, but you know, one of the reasons a lot of people say it's a good thing to do is because you're forced to learn so much so quickly. Um, for it, just in terms of like tech as well, in terms of tasting, you're tasting so many good coffees, you get really good knowledge on kind of flavors and things like pulling out. Because, like I said, I haven't been in coffee for too long, so it's a steep learning curve. And definitely with my tech and cleaning, my old housemate is here, and he'll definitely vouch that I wasn't always this tidy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so your housemate has benefited from you achieving so well in yeah, this competition. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, so, I, I mean, in, in terms of, um, I mean, I mean you, you source coffees from all around the world, but is there any you know, kind of particular projects and farms and things that you're really proud of working with? And well, I, we should talk about Jack's Coffee. Uh, the, the, the exporter from Ethiopia is a company called Primrose, and it's headed up by a lady called Meseret, who's a very, very interesting woman, and she's probably one of the most diligent professionals in coffee I've ever, I've ever come across. Um, the model in Ethiopia is largely one where coffee is sold at a loss so that uh, exporters and producers can have dollars um, which they can then import products with. Uh, Meseret doesn't do that. She's all about the coffee. So um, this is a perfect stage to exhibit uh, her product and I think Jack's done it brilliantly. And in fact, after this, if you want to, I'll put you in touch with her. I'd love to, yeah. That would be really nice, actually. Yeah, we'll yeah. do that after this. Yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and I think that's amazing as well. And, you know, we, we, we've definitely been talking about that over uh, the, the, this weekend, like different farmers and, um, and, and the, 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 the real effort that, that people are putting in now in, in terms of focus, focusing on the coffee quality, making coffee better, it's, you, you know, we, we always say that speciality is special, and moving away from commodity and, you know, obviously as green importers and, and roasters like Grumpy Mule, that there's, there's an element of those commodity stuff that we need to do, but, but also the, the lots that are special are becoming super special. Um, and that uh, increase of focus on the processing and, and just getting consistency and really the flavor in the cup that has just improved massively. I agree. Yeah. Um, but let's give a big round of applause. We couldn't do this without our sponsors. Um, and a huge thank you for Kavoya Specialty Coffee um, for being here. Um, like I said, there's still plenty of time to talk to them, find out about uh, their, their current coffee offerings and um, what they're doing and also tasting some of it. And one final big round of applause for Jack Ellis from Grumpy Mule. Thank you very much. And we will be back um, in uh, a short while with our final competitor of the day. So we'll see you soon.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Is everyone ready for our final competitor of the day? Yes. Okay, so give it up for Zoe from Clifton Coffee Roasters. And let's welcome our judges on as well. Uh, again. Hello. <laughs> Hello, thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Hello. Okay, can I have my music, please? Time. What makes the coffee industry special to you? For me, it's the connections we make with others. Over the next 15 minutes, we're going to look back at some of the past and present relationships I've formed since working in the coffee industry. And hopefully, by sharing my story with you, we'll feel a little more connected to each other. I'm going to begin by brewing the tea for the signature beverage, as well as preparing three espresso shots to allow them to cool for later. Working at a roastery has given me the opportunity to connect with producers. And so this is the first relationship that I want to highlight today. I'm really excited to serve Chameleon Geisha from our friends Alan and LK Hartman at Rocky Mountain Coffee in Boquete, Panama. At the roastery, we buy directly from the Hartmans every year because they produce and process some of the best coffee in Panama. And this geisha is an incredible example of that. They chose to name this crop Chameleon to demonstrate the multitude of colors and flavors that this geisha can give. It's my job to ensure you get to experience as many of those flavors as possible. So I'm using a custom WDT tool and a distributor to maximize the quality of the extraction and improve the reproducibility of the espressos. This gives me confidence that the flavor notes I give you today will be present in the cup. This beautiful natural coffee was shade grown at 1,800 meters above sea level giving the cherries plenty of time to develop complex sugars and acids. The cherries were then dried on raised beds for 21 days. And this extended drying time is what gives us our passion fruit and plum flavor notes. The Hartmans are known for their expertise in coffee processing. And this is displayed in the high quality sweetness and delicate florals of this coffee, which are quintessential qualities of the geisha varietal. I'm using a dose of 19 grams, and this will be the same for all three courses today. The yield for your signature beverage espressos is 42 grams as this is where the citric and malic acidities are most vibrant. So while I chill these espressos and brew the tea, I invite you to drink some water and we'll move on to the milk course shortly.
So I wanted to start with a milk course because when I started working in coffee, I spent most of my time making milk drinks. So the second relationship I want to highlight today is a barista and their customers. Whilst I was working in a cafe, I'd see the same customers every day. And so I quickly got to know them and their favorite drinks. The camaraderie that we shared was based around these sweet and that Moorish drinks that became part of their daily routine. And so the milk drinks I'm offering you today showcase the best example of a specialty coffee milk drink. To do this, I'm using unhomogenized 4% full fat milk, which I've freeze distilled to a 400% concentration. This intensifies the natural sugars found in the milk and creates a creamy dessert-like texture. To ensure that the coffee characteristics can shine through the intense sweetness of the milk. I'm increasing the strength of my espressos by reducing the yield to 38 grams. I'm steaming my milk to 50 degrees so that the temperature in the cup is around 45. This is where I find the flavor notes are most prominent. I'm combining one part espresso with three parts milk to create the most harmonious balance in the cup. So please write down your milk drink flavor notes today. Rum and raisin cake. White chocolate. and dolce de leche. When you receive your drinks, I'd like you to stir them five times in a circular motion, please. And you're welcome to use the white bowls for your use spoons. for you, thank you. There we go, thank you so much. Last but not least, I hope you enjoy.
Okay, so let's move on to the espressos. The last relationship I want to highlight today is the collaboration with our colleagues to ensure we best preserved the amazing qualities of this geisha. I turned to my colleague, Tim, who roasted this coffee 22 days ago. This rest time really accentuates those delicate florals that you'll taste as jasmine in your espresso. We chose an end temperature of 398 degrees and a 1.30 development time as this creates a higher density coffee that favors the extraction of desirable sugars and acids. To complement this high quality acidity, I'm using a 41 gram yield. Where you will, this is where you will experience the full complexity of the coffee. Now judges, please perform your crema evaluation but don't drink just yet, as I'm going to give you your taste notes. So please write down, ripe plum, passion fruit coolie, demerara sugar, and jasmine. You will experience a medium weight, a silky texture, and a lingering citrus finish that reminds me of grapefruit juice. Now these espressos really come to life as they cool. So I'm giving you a chilled teaspoon to stir your espressos with 10 times. This reduces the perception of carbonic acid, allowing you to experience the incredible qualities of this geisha without any astringency. You're welcome to use the white bowls for your use spoons again. I hope you enjoy your espressos. So for your signature beverage, I wanted to add three ingredients to symbolize the three relationships we've reflected on today. Firstly, to represent our partnership with the Hartmans, I'm including popular Panama fruits by adding 35 grams of pineapple and mango syrup. I made this by combining one part pineapple, one part mango to two parts of a one-to-one -one simple sugar syrup. I let this simmer for 15 minutes, blended it all together, and then strained the mixture to make sure my syrup was packed full of tropical fruit flavors. The high sweetness in this syrup pairs with that passion fruit coolie in the espresso to give us our first new flavor note of strawberry bubblegum. Secondly, I'm adding 45 grams of Earl Grey tea which I wanted to incorporate because this was a favorite amongst my regular customers. I brewed this at a one to 10 ratio for around four minutes and left to chill. This pairs perfectly with the six shots of geisha that I'm adding, as the tannins elevate the low bitterness and the bergamot and citrus in the tea are reminiscent of the jasmine and the grapefruit finish in the espresso. This gives us our second new flavor note, vanilla cream soda. And lastly, in honor of Tim's roasting, which really brings out the most beautiful floral characteristics of the geisha, I'm adding three grams of salted rose water, which I made by adding one part of a 5% saline solution to two parts rose water. This pairs with that stewed plum in the espresso to give us our last flavor note of Parma violets. I'm mixing this all together in a blender to create a light and creamy texture that is reminiscent of that vanilla cream soda flavor note. Thank you. As I've recounted some of the special connections I've made since working in coffee, I wanted to create a drink with nostalgic flavor notes. So 
I ask that you call time. Uh, sorry, I ask that you drink. Wait till I call time before you drink. And I'd like you to swirl your cups three times before each sip to ensure you taste all of those playful flavor notes that I really love. I want to thank you all so much for sharing your time with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. time. Yes, give it up for Zoe. Come over here. Oh. Great job. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and it's pink. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Sorry, that was probably a horrible noise in the microphone. <laughs> no, it's fine. You do what you got to do. How does it feel? Oh, to have that done, I, it must be agony waiting until the end of the day to go, or did it you? It kind of gave me time to prepare. Did actually. it? Okay, yeah. cool. Um, I still can't believe I'm here, to be honest. <laughs> well, believe it, <laughs> yeah. believe it. Thank you. Yeah, you deserve to be here. It's uh, amazing to watch your routine, like your confidence Thank on you. stage is just, yeah, it's inspiring. I love it. Thank you. Um, I, I wouldn't even put my hand up in school because I was too embarrassed to speak, so <laughs> I've come a long way. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> um, I really, really loved that you added coffee and tea together yeah. in your signature drink. Like, doesn't seem like in my mind like it should work, but it sounded amazing. Yeah, I, I basically set up a cupping of teas and then coffees and we kind of just bl mixed them together and tasted them and yeah, figured out what worked. and. It worked. <laughs> Are you a fan of Earl Grey tea yourself? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> and then the other ingredients were the, the salted rose water and what was the other one? And it was pineapple fruit. and mango syrup. Yeah. Amazing. And you made them all yourself? Yeah. Well, I didn't make the rose water. I, yeah. <laughs> but I made it salted rose water. <laughs> you didn't extract that from a rose yourself? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't grow the roses? Well, Tim, Tim's actually got roses in his garden and I did think Maybe I could go really extra and use those petals, but they, he said they that weren't would be in season, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to try your coffee. I mean, it just Me sounded too. incredible. <laughs> yeah, it would be really nice that we just get to sit down, enjoy it together. Yeah, cool. And so you're not sick of drinking it yet then? No, it's no. delicious. I don't think I'll ever get sick of it. <laughs> Good, then it was the right coffee to pick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Great, and uh, I also noticed you used the chilled teaspoons. Mm -hmm. That was a really cool touch. Um, yeah. Is that something that you tend to do, or was it because you're under this kind of time pressure? Yeah, the time pressure, and also those <laughs> pink cups are beautiful, but they hold the heat quite a lot, and I was finding that I needed to cool it down yeah. faster as well. So, well, yeah. let's say goodbye to our judges. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. judges. Let's give the judges Thank one you. last big round of applause. Thank you so Thanks, guys. Yeah, I do love the cups so much and their little coasters. Yeah, so nice. I think coasters I said that to you before. Paul's bathroom tiles that he cuts. No, <laughs> really? <laughs> it looks oh, cool, doesn't it? Amazing, yeah. You know? Love that. Okay, well, shall we make, make some, some coffee and share sure. it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so, well, I say we, you're, you're going to make it. <laughs> I'm going to drink it. Yeah. Um, and let's invite up, we've got Aaron and Gratz from Grumpy Mule, who we're gonna have a little chat with. Hey guys, hi again. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> Hello. Hello, take a seat, relax. Yeah, you will do. Uh, there's a microphone there, which one of you can hold, if you like. I'm only doing this to sit on the sofa and drink coffee. Yeah? Yes, I know. Well, enjoy it, because there'll be more to do at the end of the day. Great. <laughs> Sick. So, Zoe, remind yes. us the tasting notes that we should expect in this geisha. You will get ripe plum. Ripe plum. Passion fruit coolie. And then demerara sugar and jasmine. Amazing. Oh, I'm yes. so excited, honestly. 
And, oh, you had a custom WDT tool you mentioned. Yeah. How did that come about? Um, we got it 3D printed, <laughs> which is a bit extra. Um, but, yeah, I was using a hand one in the heat, mm -hmm. and it just is very time consuming. It was all right for the heats because I'm only making, you know, two espressos. I was making seven, so I just needed to be faster. And consistent. Yeah. You know, it does the same every time. It does give you that time. added consistency, doesn't yeah, it? So exactly. that's the one that you are toiling around with your finger. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> it's so, so cool. graceful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you remind us of your recipe. Was it a 40 gram yield? 41. Yeah, 41. 19 to 41. So that is for those okay. guys. And then I'll make Let another one for over. you to try. And I've only got two more cups, but. <laughs> Any instructions given us? Oh, I don't have any chilled teaspoons left, unfortunately. Um, but you can stir it, maybe stir it 20 times. Stir yeah. it 20 <laughs> times. <laughs> clockwise or anti-clockwise? Front to back, please. Front to back, please. <laughs> Front to back 20 times. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I always have to really think about that. I'm like, front, <laughs> my, front back. Yeah. yeah. I'm just making another one. You can have one then as well. Oh, yes, please. I don't have any spray And then cups. you can sit down and relax after that. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to make one for these guys too, but I don't have any oh, cups. Haven't they already tasted it? Yeah, many, many times. But <laughs> oh, thanks. That's kind. Do you want to go and get them? He wants a scrub. <laughs> Yes, this is the problem with these. You can have that one. Thank these you. These guys can share okay. this one. I don't want this one. Let's sit down and chill out. Cheers. You're going to have yeah, to okay. share. Will you please um, stir me? Thank you. I'm sticking to them. I need... No, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Is Thank that you. right? Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, cheers. 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 Lovely. <laughs> mm. Mm. Delicious. Yeah, Good. delicious. Super sweet. Mm. Really, really like that. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. You're welcome. Awesome. So, congrats, Aaron. I have a mic. Do you have any questions for Zoe? Um, I've got one. It's probably very boring, but um, uh, sitting here with a couple of different hats, I guess one is the Grumpy Mule hat, which is my employer, but also the uh, SCA committee hat. Um, and uh, as working for the Grumpy Mule, we are a company that encourage people and colleagues to take part in this competition. Um, the very boring question is, how does it feel coming from a, a newcomer who came to see us, been done been there, done that, and yeah. you were unsure by memory yeah. uh, to then uh, sign up, go through the heats, and sit in here on the final six. How's, how's the journey? Uh, Apologies for the cliche. No, that's fine. I have a microphone, yeah. Um, oh, of course. Yeah, pretty, pretty crazy. I think I'm going to need a week to... I've booked myself a holiday, and I'm going to spend four days sitting oh, there going, what just happened? By the way, so have I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, all I would say as well to anybody thinking about it is you'll never feel ready, so just just do it. I think I was waiting like, oh, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, but once you sign up, you'll get ready, you know? <laughs> so just, try, yeah. Yeah, that's it's true. It kind of motivates you, doesn't it? Yeah. To just learn yeah. and learn what you need to... And also, to... if you, you know, if you enter the heats and you don't get through, like, Nobody's going to remember. Just, like, just try and learn. You know, that's what I thought the whole time, and I think maybe that helped. You know, I didn't put any pressure on myself, and I just enjoyed it. Will you do it again? Pardon? Will you do it again? Uh, e probably, yes. Maybe not next year, 
I might have, I might let somebody else at Clifton compete and then, you know. I'll be annoyed if you don't. That was so polished. <laughs> Thank you. Um, like so clean, yeah. polished. Um, you've got such a lovely, calm stage presence. Doesn't Thank she? You. It yeah. Was, yeah. It's like very calm. It was, I would be annoyed if you didn't do it again. Genuinely. Thank you. I'm glad I come across calm because honestly inside I'm really not feeling calm. Yeah, I know, that, I know about feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great. Well, uh, let's give Zoe one last big round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Okay, well, you can relax and uh, you're welcome to go Thank you. sit with your friends. I'll take my apron and my microphone yeah. off, please. <laughs> Chill out. Thank you. Cool. So let's chat about Grumpy Mule. Um, tell us, I mean, Everyone has, has noticed how many competitors Grumpy Mule has entered into the competition this year. And we've had uh, three in the semifinals, two in the finals. I mean, uh, what is your approach to competitions? Because you clearly are doing something right. Um, we are a big fan of uh, coffee competitions, uh, as well as, uh, uh, yeah, one notice we enter in, regularly entering people. We are also a sponsor. Um, and because we are, uh, we are a big fan of the sp speciality coffee uh, movement in the United Kingdom, um, also for whatever reason, uh, we're not always, as a Grand associated with speciality coffee, and that's another way for us to come here and, and, and tell the wider um, audience, you know, we're here, and, uh, and you know what, looking at the couple of guys we're in today, we got some damn good coffee that we'd love people to try. Um, and the other side of this for us, it's, as a business, is also the education. Because as we all know, and probably established by now, by practicing, training, entering, you learn. And we love, we are a big fan of our colleagues learn, share, and ultimately help our customers through the journey to serve a better coffee. Yeah. I'll, I'll second out on the education that uh, I always regularly push anyone in the, the company, not just company industry, to look at it because it, it's, it's a pressure cooker where you have to learn all about roasting, all about ratio, all about different types of coffee, and it just helps improve people. For, and I'm, I regularly say, the job I do, I'm coffee program manager, Grumpy Mule, I handle all the green buying. I only do it because I competed, because I had to learn so quick, and I started to learn a lot about, um, particularly when I used uh, an Ethiopian and learned about the green, it got me really interested and it's the reason I do my job today. So it's competing is the reason I do my job today. Yeah, and I feel like there's definitely something in the whole team coming together as well, because it's been amazing, all the heats as well, to see the people who are working on the stand, supporting the colleagues who are competing. There's just definitely this like amazing energy of everyone just like lifting each other up, right? We, we try, we try. <laughs> But yeah. And um, I know that you guys do um, offer free coffee and training support to anyone who wants to compete. Um, you don't have to be from Grumpy Mule. No. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that? And I know you're doing it for next year again. Yeah, How does someone access that? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. We're doing it again. So the, the two semi-final coffees, uh, Jack's Supernatural and the Sea Drivet Christian, were both coffees that you could have picked up for free. So if you are a first time competitor, if you work in a coffee shop, if you're struggling to find coffee, if you just want some advice, get in touch. Because um, yeah, the coffee that Jack used today was sponsorship coffee, which um, uh, he, uh, don't take anything away, he has been an absolute breath of fresh air. Well done. But um, uh, yeah, um, we, uh, we'll be doing the same again. We work with Cavoya, so it's a coffee through Cavoya as well. We work together and we find coffees that um, need, a, need a stage and are good enough to get you to a semi, to a final, if you apply yourselves right. And uh, I'll let you handle the training bit. Yeah, uh, one of the other barriers that we've a uh, SCA cap on, <laughs> um, I've come across when, when, when we went out on the road with, with Camilla, Rob, and some of the other guys for the being that have done that event. Um, some of the wannabe competitors or some of the guys on the fence felt that perhaps it, it was a big deal and they didn't have the infrastructure and the support behind them in terms of the, the training, the, the support, the resources. And when I say resources, it's not just the money. It's just that, that help that for someone who's done it. And the coaching, yeah. And, and 
as well as the coffee, we are quite happy to provide the Grampi Mule. Uh, you said it yourself, we've had a number of guys competing. We kind of understand, we hope by now, <laughs> we kind of understand competition. So, yeah, as well as the coffee, by all means, uh, this year and for next year, as long as we sponsor, we will also provide training and support and facility to train, obviously pending traveling. We, we, you know. I mean, that's amazing. I think that, that definitely takes down that that barrier to, ent barrier to entry for a lot of people. It really, really does. Yeah, when, I, when, when I stand there and I say, I love this, I love coffee, it's the community, it's the, that sort of, it just feel like one big family. And um, yeah, we, that Grat feels the same, Diana, it, it, we want that to spread. We want the whole industry to just be this friendly place and I'll quite happily yeah. help a competitor polish cups backstage, that's fine, I don't mind. Um, yeah, we just, we are here to help, so get in touch. Love that, love that energy. And I think Zoe is just like the perfect example of someone who like came to one of those SEA events, right? And then, you know, got her team around her and is just, That's yeah, incredible. absolutely smashed it. Um, and I think, yeah, it inspires people who haven't competed before to give it a go. Um, yeah, what would your piece of advice be to anyone who is sitting at home thinking, do I do it next year? I should get Lizzie up here. I won't put her through that. So Lizzie's routine, I loved this year. She did a routine on comfort. Um, so the coffee was comfortable. But the reason that she did it was she was outside of a comfort zone. And when you're outside of your comfort zone, you grow far quicker. No one ever improves sitting in your comfort zone. So push yourself. Because she's exactly right. If you don't get fruity heats, no one remembers. Um, and it's absolutely fine. And I'm, I mean, for anyone that doesn't know, I got disqualified next year, like last year. You, you, you take it and you, you come back. There's, it, you always just, yeah, give it a go. If you find it interesting, give it a go. Because I guarantee you will end up enjoying it. You will. Anything to add, Gratz? Same. Uh, one thing I said to the, the, the guys that came to the event, uh, the best advice I can give is have a go. No one is going to ever think less of you, ever. Yeah, I think most of us just admire the bravery, to be honest. And I think the thing that you take away from it most is your own growth, like we were saying, with the things that you've learned and the things that you've pushed yourself to do that you might not have done before. Yeah. Oh, this is wholesome, isn't it? <laughs> nice way to close the day. Warm inside, yeah. Okay, well, uh, thank you again for sponsoring the comp and also just like providing us with caffeine the entire day through all the heats and the semis and the finals um, and amazing different coffees. So yeah, let's give one big round of applause for Grumpy Mule. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, so I've been told that we should be getting results around about five, as close to five as possible. So that's not far away. So stay tuned, and we'll be back with some announcements very soon. Bye. Bye.
Hello and welcome back to UKBC Finals 2023. It has been an absolutely amazing uh, two days of competition. The standard um, has been amazingly high. I've had the privilege of tasting at least um, a, a, a fresh brew of three of the competitors, uh, which was delicious uh, today, and sharing it with our sponsors. Um, and we couldn't do this without our sponsors, so let's be give a huge round of applause to our venue and coffee machine sponsor, Chimberly UK. <laughs> and as well, we've done this before, um, but a special thank you. Where is Steve? Out the back, probably. Um, He's running around. Anyway, um, Steve from Chimbley, who has uh, driven a van all around the country to make the heats possible and has been running um, the, the back, well, running the, the team to make sure that the machines are all clean and everything else. Um, so even if we can find him or not find him, big round of applause for Steve. I'm sure he's had many, many a sleepless night um, kind of uh, around this competition period. So, um, The amazing uh, Malconig E80 Supreme Grinders. <laughs> I, I mean, actually, on the display here, 2.93 seconds, you can... Uh, is uh, an indication of how fast you can grind coffee on this grinder. And certainly in competition, and, and one of the competitors was saying that today, that uh, you know, actually when you've only got 15 minutes, even saving a few seconds here and there really adds benefit. So, uh, and the consistency of the brews is obviously massively improved um, by that great 80 mil burr set and the consistency. So big thank you to Liam and Jim and Mark and the team from uh, Malconig. They're, they're probably slightly um, deaf um, by the amount of time that they've had the vacuum on cleaning uh, it out. Uh, it's been very noisy today. Um, let's um, give a big um, shout out to Britta, our water sponsor. Yep, Gary is still here. He's, stand, he's packed up his stand, um, but Gary is here, um, ensuring consistency throughout the heat as much as is possible um, w and, and hitting the SCA spec uh, every single time. So that's great. Also, um, serving as coffee um, on the sponsor grinder and sponsor machine, Grumpy Mule. And the team from Grumpy Mule have been absolutely fantastic in terms of, you know, um, just serving everybody, looking after everybody, and making sure that we, we stay caffeinated. Um, it, it's really interesting in terms of uh, how much coffee you sometimes don't consume during a competition, apart from the judges, um, but, but they have been providing that. A new sponsor that has come on board, a head of... Uh, the rule changes that we'll, we will implement into next season. Um, Oatly as our alternative milk sponsor. <laughs> and obviously as we progress into preparing for the next season where uh, milk alternatives are uh, available and welcome into competition, that they're going to help us take through that journey but also um, in terms of what they brought to the competition as well, um, that um, for the winner, a thousand pounds. Yeah, that's definitely worth it. a bit more of a clap than that, I think, a thousand pounds. Yeah. 
cash prize. They will sort it out once we know who the winners are. Um, second place, 500 pounds. <laughs> and third place will also get 250 pounds. The guys at Kavoya uh, Speciality Coffee for uh, being our green partner. <laughs> the team at Urnex for providing the cleaning chemicals, the judges' aprons and clipboards. <laughs> Trewithian Dairy as our dairy milk sponsor. Um, Topple, our reusable cup sponsor who provided um, first, second and third place cup trophies uh, at the heat. So a big round of applause for Topple. <laughs> and last but by no means least, providing these wonderful uh, tro push tamp trophies, Clockwork Espresso. A big thank you should go out as well to our team of volunteers who, uh, you know, we have different people every day and throughout all the heats. Um, so a big thank you to all the volunteers who've been a part of this journey. Um, you make it happen. Um, running backstage, running the, the front of house, cleaning up, sorting everything out, um, all of that makes everything go smoothly. I'd personally like to thank the SCA committee who uh, support me in terms of my role as national coordinator. So we uh, have Antonia who can't be with us. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Jonathan, who was here yesterday but can't be here today. So a round of applause for Jonathan. Camilla as our community coordinator. Grats uh, on events. And Alex on our comms uh, communications uh, coordinator. Absolutely. I'm, I'm moving on to those now. Um, I, I was segueing via our wonderful um, keeping us legal um, in terms of World Coffee events. Our World Coffee events rep, Adita. <laughs> who has the... Uh, very difficult task sometimes. No, the, the easy task of, um, the wonderful task of looking after our judges. So a big round of applause to our judges. Um, <laughs> whose main job is to reward the competitors as much as possible um, for the work that they put in. Um, there are so many people, so many competitors, more than ever this year. And, you know, let's have an elongated round of applause for everybody who has entered through the heats, got through to semis, and into finals. Sorry, I'm back. Um, cool. Um, like I say, amazing two days competition. The standard this year has been phenomenal. Um, let's welcome up onto stage, um, in the order that they competed in today, um, representative formative coffee, Ian Kizik.
representing Watch House, Ted Longdon. Aaron Stein from Grumpy Mule. Area 51, Coffee Roasters Evangelos. Grumpy Mule, Jack Ellis. And last, but by no means least, Clifton Coffee Roasters, Zoe Williams. So I am going to introduce one more person who has saved my voice um, and sharing so many of these duties. Um, please give a big SEA. Welcome to Helena. Hi. So, uh, first year working with us um, on the MCing. How, do you, how have you found this season? I've absolutely loved it. It's just been amazing, honestly. Uh, so cool to just meet everyone at the heats, all the spectators, the coaches. I've just met so many new people and I've had so much fun and it's just such a nice atmosphere. Honestly, it's just a pleasure to be part of it. Just just amazing. So cool. thank you for having well, me. Well, it's here. been wonderful. Round of applause again for Helena. Thank you. Um, I am looking for Liam and Jim. Maybe. Jim? I see one of them. Cool. Uh, do you guys want to come out? And uh, they've got a few little Jim, you can come out. Or Liam, or both. Um, and we, they've got some uh, oh, gifts sorry. from here. And also, um, Gratz Gratz. is somewhere uh, from Grumpy Mule. So we can give those gifts out so, um, to our six finalists, at least. So we'll let you give those gifts. And I'm just going to check the results. Okay. I'll stand over here. Bit of music. I feel like I'm in the way. Um, I think you can uh, hand them out if you'd like. Uh, so we've got a little Lego EK43, which is pretty cool. A little pin badge and a bag of coffee. Oh. Gotta love the freebies. I mean, the Lego models are awesome, and I'm kind of jealous. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, also, just as a little reminder as well, Thanks, thank guys. you to Alex. Thank you, Grats. Big round of applause one more time. Grumpy Mule and Mal Conig. Um, just a, um, a word from Pete, who couldn't be here. Um, Pete um, and Push Tamp um, have offered you a personalized tamper. So get in touch with Pete after this. And I guess tell him what you want on it. And, and that's it. So a big round of applause for Clockwork Espresso. <laughs> Just double checking. We ready? It would be very embarrassing if I got this wrong. <laughs> so um, I, I think. Okay, in third place, let's get this, this trophy ready. Okay, in third place, please give it up for Ted Longdon from Watch House. Ready for second place? Let's do this. Yeah. So um, in second place, winning this wonderful trophy and uh, 500 pounds. Um, this actually goes to a newcomer. Representing Clifton Coffee. <laughs> Zoe Williams!
absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, you, you know, to see newcomers come through in such a way um, is a real pleasure. So, um, all right, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. And this is uh, your honor. Thank you. Place. Okay, in first place and winning, how much is it, Rob? A thousand, thousand pounds. pounds. Thanks, Mr. John. Um, it is Ian Kissick from Formative. <laughs> Uh, how do you feel? Emotional. <laughs> um, well, I think, you know, for, from all of us, um, you know, um, absolutely congratulations. You are going to represent the UK in Athens, um, whether you like it or not. There you go. Um, so, you so you've got to think of some stuff. Um, but please give a big round of applause to all of our six finalists one more time. And we're going to show the final rankings on the screen. Okay. We'll just give everybody a little bit of a moment uh, to do that. And um, for the people on the live stream, pretty much, we're going to hold that screen up there for a little bit. Um, judges debriefs will be available uh, for the competitors. And um, it has been an absolutely fantastic season. We look forward to the next one with the sponsors that we've got, working more, trying to develop the competition as much as possible. See you soon. Bye.